Hello everyone, Gary Simon here and welcome to this course. We're going to do a quick introduction and kind of a preview in terms of what we're doing and also what the purpose of this course really is. So there's a lot of different options when it comes to JavaScript for developing and designing your web apps these days. So the top three seem to be Angular, React, and Vue.js. So typically when you're new or you're not familiar with any of these three, uh, you may go to Google and type in React versus Angular versus, you know, Vue just to see what other people's takes on it and their opinions are. Now that's, a, that's fine, but sometimes, you know, we're different and you can't always trust other people's subjective opinions. So the goal of this course is to create a single project and we're going to recreate it in each of these three different technologies. So we have React, Angular, and Vue. And the purpose is to get your feet wet enough so that you can walk away from this course and say, hey, I like Angular better than these other two, or I like Vue a lot better for my purposes. All right, so our initial videos are going to cover the mock-up of this app, actually, no, this app, <laughs> Uh, right here and it's a very simple generic landing page, but it's well designed We're going to be using the Balma CSS framework and it's relatively new and becoming quite popular Of course, you can always use bootstrap or foundation if you wish and we're going to be stepping into Adobe XD to create a proto Prototype now if you're not really interested in that part You can just skip ahead in this course once it's completely finished and just dive into either angular react or Vue when we create this project all right, so let's get started. All right, guys, so basically in this chapter, we're gonna be focusing on designing a project mock-up for a fictional company with a very generic, but very well-designed landing page. And so right here, we have a web design grid document that I want you to open up from the project files. Just go ahead and download that wherever you're viewing this at. I'll make it easy for you to find those project files. And if you're unfamiliar with what a grid system is, well, basically we have 12 different columns here. And the purpose that we'll say just at this point in the course is that this is gonna help us structure our layout into different columns. So depending on what modern CSS framework you're gonna be working with, whether that be Bootstrap or Foundation uh, or Balma, which is what we're gonna be using, uh, they're all based on at least 12 column grid systems and they're responsive and makes them, it makes your layout essentially adapt to different viewports or different devices like tablets, desktops, and mobile phones. All right, so basically uh, we wanna click on and toggle on and off the layers here and you'll see we have our artboard. This is the web 1920. So by default, we're gonna start designing the site based on a large viewport like a desktop and if we come into here we'll see we have a grid layer and we will be toggling this on and off as we go all right so for now i'm going to leave it on and we're going to focus on doing a sort of like a nav bar at the top now like i mentioned we're going to be using balma css and this is a modern front end responsive framework and let me show you the site real quickly. And you can access it at balma.io. Let me just drag this up slightly. And we'll be referring to the documentation quite a bit as we're designing our prototype. The reason being, we're gonna be using some of these predefined elements that the Balma framework offers. So you can see it's uh, organized in different tabs and also different sub tabs. So we have an overview over here of how to install, and we'll go over this later on in the course after we get done with the prototypes. Uh, we have, you know, just a really well-documented outline of this framework going on here. So like I said, we want to start with a nav bar. And so if we go over to components, we'll see we have a nav right here. And it's basically a responsive horizontal nav bar that can contain links, tabs, buttons, icons, and a logo. All right, so it tells you just information about how to structure it. And we're gonna go over this later on in the course once we get to that point. Uh, but for now, all we're gonna look at is just the design and the example is right here at the top. So this is the nav bar. And of course we can customize this based on our needs and we will. But all you have to just really know is just how it's structured, kind of what the buttons look like. We are going to have a button for ours. 
um, and also the links and how they're structured. Now, of course, we can also customize it with our own CSS later on. So we'll just uh, think of that going forward. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a nav bar. So what we'll do, and by the way, I will try to remember as much as possible, like when I zoom up, for instance, or do certain things with my mouse and keyboard, I'll try to remember to let you know what I did. For instance, right there, to zoom in and out, we hold Alt in the mouse scroll wheel. Also to pan or move things around, we hold the space bar and left click and drag. Okay, so for our nav bar, we're gonna have it extend initially 100% of the viewport width. So in this context, we don't have to really worry about the grid at all. All right, so we're just gonna take a rectangle here, left click, drag it out. I'm not too concerned at this point with the height or anything like that. We just wanna get a general idea. All right, so when we let go, we don't need a border on this. We do wanna fill, and I'm going to give it a specific color code. And the fill, the color code is 383838. And this is basically, if you hit enter, uh, not quite a black, not in a medium gray, just kind of in between. I'm not too much of a fan of uh, absolute black these days for this, for like a nav bar, for instance. And uh, there's some obviously context uh, in which, you know, it would work well. All right, so now we'll go ahead and put in a logo. So we'll take the type tool and just left click somewhere and I'm just going to type in my company. Of course, it's real small, we can't really see it. So I'm gonna zoom up with Alt Scroll Wheel. And real quickly over here, we can see we have the text panel options and this is the size. I uh, Just a side note, you can left click and drag up or down to change the size. So we'll say somewhere around 33 will be fine. And we'll make it white here for the fill. All right, right around there is good. All right, and then we're gonna have a right aligned horizontal navigation over here. All right, so we're gonna have four different links uh, and then also a call to action button over here. So I'll left click, we'll start right around here and I'll just type in home. All right. I'm gonna make this larger. Right around 27 will work. And there's not enough contrast, so let's change the fill here. Bring it up. Right around the color code is BF, 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 like your boyfriend. Or not. Okay, so Control C and then Control V. We'll move this over, holding Shift. Right now, the width doesn't really, it's not really important at this point. We'll get that figured out in a second once we get them all there. We're gonna have about, and then Control C, Control V. See, when we move, move it over, we could see that those little guides showed up, but right there is even spacing. We'll change this to features. You can, by the way, hit escape, just to select the move tool. Control C, Control F and then also a fact page. We are going to make the fact page function, by the way, uh, when we get to the development process for each of our three different JavaScript technologies, React, Angular, and Vue. All right, so that looks pretty good for now. I may want to decrease the size, maybe just the 25. All right, now, we'll go ahead and create a call to action button. Now this is a good point to go back and look at the Balma documentation. And we can see some examples of a button here, but if we go to elements button, just gonna give you um, examples and the coding examples associated with their buttons and how they have them styled by default. Now notice we also have uh, outlined versions. And I think that's what I want to use just for a one button in the navigation. All right, so let's go back and let's go ahead and use our rectangle once again. I'm just going to left click and drag out. Somewhere right around there will work. All right, we're going to get rid of the fill and we're going to give it a specific color code. 
All right, so I just pasted in color code of 1EC9AC. And if you click this right here, it's going to add it to our swatches so that we can reuse it easily later on. All right, so now if you also notice, if we go back to our documentation, there is a slight bevel or rounded corner on the button. So let's go ahead and emulate that as well. We can just drag up right here, uh, roughly to around five, and that looks good. All right, by the way, we want to space this out evenly. So I'm going to take all of these four while holding the shift, and then hold shift and left click and drag right around there. So we have equal space between each of these elements. So that creates consistency, which is obviously very important whenever you're dealing with uh, UI design. All right, so what I wanna do now is put in some text. So we take the type tool, and if we want this to be centered, we can just left click and drag all the way from the left to the very right. Then over here, we click on center, and that's how you absolutely center text here in Adobe XD, as well as other uh, graphics applications, pretty standard. So this is gonna be just uh, a join now text right here, join now button. And as well, we're gonna make the text the same color. So we click over here and there we go. All right, awesome. One final thing, if we go back to the Balma documentation, go back to nav, uh, we can see that if we come down, there's some other examples that we have here. Um, you can actually add a class that has a shadow. And there's a shadow that will show up if you add this class. So the shadow is very subtle. So let's just add a shadow. And of course, it's not necessary, but I'm choosing to add it. So just add a shadow just like that. And we'll see what the uh, direction is. So um, it's just going straight down by three pixels, which is pretty consistent. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just barely there. Okay, so that is it for this section. Uh, and next, we're gonna go ahead and get focused on the hero section down here. All right, so what we're going to do now is focus on what's called the hero section. So a hero section, if you're unaware, is the portion in a design or uh, usually a website or a web app. When you first land on the home page or a landing page, for instance, you'll see just an area that's probably around this large. It's usually very simplistic. It has a title, subtitle usually, and a call to action button. And the background is either a solid color, some type of graphic or vector design, or an actual photograph that's just kind of laid there in the background that doesn't contrast too much with the text that's in front. So once again, we'll go ahead back to our Balma and if we click on layout and we click on hero, there is a hero class section and uh, it's basically designated by a section tag in here with class of hero and then other supporting classes. And if we scroll down, we'll see there's a lot of different examples of how you can structure. This is a very minimalistic, kind of very uh, not tall version of a hero section. And then we come down here and we'll have more. You can work in gradients real easily, as we could see right here. Um, and we'll probably be using a section right here uh, in terms of aesthetics. Uh, it's not going to be blue. Actually, we're going to use a photograph. Uh, but we'll have a title, subtitle, and also a call to action button. OK, so let's go ahead back. And what we want to do, like I mentioned before, we're going to have uh, a photograph background for this. But first, we need a container to place that into, and that's how Adobe XD basically works. Kind of works like a clipping mask. So if we just left click starting right underneath that nav, probably somewhere right around here will work well. And then just let go. The color doesn't matter. It's going to be completely hidden based on the uh, photograph we're about to place into it. So for this step, we want to make sure it's still selected. And I want you to download the project files and inside of the project files in the M2 section, you will find uh, a clouds.jpg file. 
So just to show you, here it is, clouds.jpg. We left click and just drag it right there. Close this out, and there we go. Very simple, as you can see. So let's get our layers, and we can see it's kind of going over our grid. Um, so we'll go ahead and right-click this. We select this, right-click, and we'll choose a range and uh, bring forward. It's currently showing up off of my screen, unfortunately, the way I have my recording set up. Uh, but it, if you just come down all the way here, you'll see a range, and then you want to send or bring to front, rather. There we go. All right, great. So again, we'll be toggling this on and off. In terms of opacity, let's bring this down just a bit so we can kind of see what's happening. Okay. And by the way, I, I chose to reorder it that way because right now, currently, I don't know why they wouldn't include this yet. Because this is beta for Adobe XD, you can't actually drag layers at all. So you can't reorder them. Okay, so now what we want to do is I uh, add our type. So now we're kind of getting to the part where we kind of have to pay attention to these grids and just to make sure everything's lined up, you know, especially at the beginning of the layout. Uh, and also in terms of how wide we want certain elements to be or to extend across. Do we want to extend across all 12 of these columns or maybe just, you know, maybe to six or seven? So we'll get into that just shortly. So what we want to do now is take our type tool. We'll go ahead and hide that real quickly. I'm going to zoom up with the alt scroll wheel. And we're just going to left click right around here. We want to give ourselves a lot of margin and padding, especially for a hero section, because I, when you get things crammed up real close together, it just completely throws off the entire flow and the aesthetic of the design. So we're going to give ourselves a decent amount of space. So soaring to new heights is going to be my headline there. So let's go ahead and increase that quite substantially. I'll say maybe right around 67. We'll make it black. All right. Now let's also go ahead and create a subtitle or a subheading. So this time I'm gonna left click and we're gonna drag it out to approximately, I would say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine. So nine columns long, which ends just after features right here. So left click and drag out right here. All right, great. So the size of this, of course, is going to be quite a bit less. I'm going to just put 33 for now, although it may change. Although for some reasons, it's not taking. Let me just do this. There we go. It updates after you select off of it. All right. So I'm just going to put in some lorem ipsum text. You can go to lipsum.com and just copy and paste some of it. And this is all I'm going to use for now. All right. So let's bring things down just a little bit. Notice how we have 166 at the top. Uh, it's just on the very left in, in pink. It might be hard to see. Um, when it comes to the designing like this, you also want to make sure at the bottom of your element right here, you're also about 166 or even amount of white space between these edges. And that just helps the aesthetics and the flow of your design and it helps things just look a lot better when you have things that are consistent. Okay, so now uh, we're also going to have a call to action button just underneath this. So we'll go ahead and actually we'll copy this one right here. So we're gonna get the text and the actual button itself. So I held shift and select both of those, control C, control V, move it down over here. This one's not going to be hollow. We want it to really stand out because it's gonna be our primary call to action. So go out around three columns here. We don't need a border. We do wanna fill with our primary color. Now let's select the text right here. It's the same color so we can't see it and we'll make it white. And we'll also select this and increase the size. We're gonna change this though to our services. Now the way the buttons work by default in Balma, if we go back here, We'll go to elements, button, 
is they're based on the width of the text that's inside. And I believe there is a class that will allow you to extend it to 100% uh, of the parent container. Um, but just to make things a little bit simpler on ourselves so we don't have to add that, we're going to bring this in right around here and bring this in around the same size. So it's going to look roughly like this. All right, great. So now let's go ahead and try to give ourselves around an even or equal amount of space from the top and bottom. All right. So let's go ahead and hide this real quick and get our layers, hide the grid. All right. Do I like this? Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, looking, let me zoom up just a little bit. I wish I was on a larger desktop, but this will be good for now. I think we could probably even make this bold to make it to stick out just a bit more. This call to action button could also be a little bit larger. So we'll take this text in here. We'll increase the size. Right around there. All right, so as you can see, it's really pretty standard right now. Um, I'm just curious if there's a yeah, semi-light version. I kind of like that better. It creates more of a distinction and also helps reinforce what's called visual hierarchy. So you know, your eyes are kind of really just attracted to this, this headline right here. And then this supporting content is a little bit more of an afterthought afterwards. All right. Okay, that's good. So that's it for this section. In the next, we're going to go ahead and focus on the other supporting content, which is secondary to the hero content uh, down here. All right, so here we're going to have two different sections of content. The first is just going to be a little bit more type down here with an icon. Uh, and then down here, we're just going to have three cards. Uh, and that's going to be for containers for testimonials, essentially. Um, and then at the bottom, we'll have a footer. So to get started, the very first thing that we want to do is add an icon. Now, instead of doing an icon by scratch, which you can definitely do using these tools up here in Adobe XD, uh, we're going to go ahead and use Font Awesome. Now, the reason being is because I Balma here, if we go back to overview, we'll see that it says font awesome icons. If you want to use icons with Balma, then don't forget to include font awesome. So uh, we'll be including that once we get to that section later, later on. So uh, if we go to Google and we type in font, font awesome icons, we click on that. And here is a search section. And we have tons of icons that we can use in a project. So I'm just going to use a cog. So type in cog. There we go. And right here is what we want to reference is this FA hyphen cog. Right now, I don't believe there's a way to download these, say, for instance, as PNG files. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get a PNG file out of this. And to do that, if you head on over to fa2png.io, which basically means font awesome to PNG, you can type in the name, and that was fa-cog. All right, the color. In our case, we want the color to be our primary color, so I'm going to hop back into XD, and we're going to grab real quickly this color right here. Take that color code, control C to copy it, and we'll go back, paste that in. And for the size, I think 100 pixels will definitely be fine. So I click generate and then click download. You can go ahead and show in folder. I'm going to, mine showed up off screen, by the way. When it shows up, simply just drag it on anywhere. There, yeah, that's perfect. Right around there. Okay, so now this is a good time to get out the grid. So let's go back to our layers. We'll show it. 
and we want it to fit within this first column. So when we structure the HTML, it's basically going to be the size of the first column that we have specified. Now remember, we also want a good amount of space. So I'm gonna drag this down because it doesn't look like there's quite enough right here as compared to the top. So I'm gonna drag this down. So we have an e even amount of space from here to here, and then from here to here, and then from here to here as well. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get our type tool. I'm going to zoom up just a bit. And I'm going to left click starting from right around here. And I think we'll go out to around right there. So we're starting at the second column and ending at uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So seven. This is six columns long, technically. We're starting at the second. And I'm just going to type in. Uh, a quick sentence. We provide superior logistics so that your business can succeed in a crazy world. Something really um, you know, kind of silly, really. All right, so we'll uh, increase this. And we want this to be pretty thick. So we also will drop this down. We're going to make it black. We're going to make it bold. And we'll put it right there. We want it to begin just at the top of this cog. We want them to be even. All right. And then we're also going to put in some Lorem Ipsen text. And you know what? I think I'm going to drag this in one column right around there. So now we're going to do a second one. And in fact, we can just take this, Control C, Control V, or you can hit Control D. That'll do everything at once to duplicate it. I'm being a little bit inefficient. And I'm just going to grab more lorem ipsum text. So take this, paste that in. And for this size, let's see what the size of the text is up here. It's 33. Let's try 33 here as well. We're going to make it light. All right. We can also extend the line height so it matches the width of this over here. So let's go ahead and hide this real quick, the grid, just to see what things are looking like so far. All right, pretty good. Let me scale it down just a tiny bit. All right, so now we'll take this back in. All right, I like that. All right, looking good so far. So now in the next section, let's do um, some cards based on three different columns, which they always need to add up to 12 um, if you want everything to fill out. So they will be four columns long each. So before we get to that part, we're going to go ahead and click on the name of our artboard. And we're going to increase the size or the height. So I'm going to put in 2100 just for now. Notice this little dashed line. That's based on the viewport height. So anything beneath this will scroll. There will be a scroll when we go to play the prototype. All right, so let's go ahead back and turn on the grid. And that is right here. This grid, let's go ahead and click on it and drag this down. Great. Okay, so now let's refer back real quick to our, we can close this out, to our Balma documentation. And we have I believe it's referred to as yeah, a component. It's the first one, card. And this will give you an idea of what the cards look like. So essentially the cards in and of themselves, all they are is a very light border, basically one pixels it looks like. And there's also a very tiny little drop shadow that comes off to the right um, and bottom. And this gives you a bunch of stuff. So we're probably going to focus on creating something more like this example as opposed to the top two up here. So you can see they're very flexible. Um, we're not going to have share buttons. It's really just going to be a really simple box with a quote inside of it. OK, so let's go back and do that. So the first one, we'll take the rectangle tool. And right now where it's at, not too important. We'll adjust it later. It needs to be four columns long, though. All right, 
So now let's go ahead and just temporarily, well, we can leave it there. I was gonna hide it, but no big deal. We'll take the type tool and come right around here. And for now, I'm just gonna hit ASDF. I'm gonna go off screen and just copy a quote that I had. You can go ahead and paste this in if you wish. And I'm gonna increase the size. Um, let's go ahead and make it black. We'll make this uh, light as well. All right, so if I zoom in, you can see the type that I use. Again, you can put whatever you want. Um, and that looks pretty good. And then also we will have an author name. So I'll just put like a uh, Gary Simon. Probably make this a little bit bigger. And I do like uh, the default color that it gives us. It's just kind of like a medium gray right there. And we'll bring this in. Notice I'm looking to make sure we have, you know, an equal amount of white space on the top, bottom, left and right. And there we go. So now we're gonna repeat grid this because we have three of them. So it's kind of silly just to sit there and copy and paste each one. Uh, so we take this text right here, hold shift, select that, and then also the back. So we have three items selected. You can hit Control G, that's optional by the way. You really don't have to group them if you don't want to. Or you can just hit uh, Repeat Grid. So we'll go ahead and repeat this. And just to right there, and then we can increase the size just by, uh, of you know between them, just by dragging that there in the middle. All right. So now again, we wanna make sure there's even or equal margin between these elements. Let's go ahead and hide the grid real quick. All right, and that is what we have so far. Actually, I think things could be probably spaced out. No, I think they're good for now. Yeah, right there is good. Okay, so I'm liking this so far. Um, in the next section, what we'll do is add a real quick footer down here, and it'll just be basically two columns with some text on the left and then some icons, social icons on the right. All right, so let's go ahead and create a real quick footer down here. Okay, so if I click on our artboard title, we'll go ahead and drag this down just a bit. It's not gonna be a very, you know, very beefy, thick footer as some people like to do. Um, and we're going to use our uh, our fill color right here, our primary color for it. So let's go ahead and take the rectangle tool, left click and drag, get rid of the border, give us a fill of our primary color. All right, so this works pretty well. I like the color. Um, I think I may want to take this again and just increase it slightly just to give us a little bit more room oops wrong one so we'll drag this down right there all right great so now we really don't need the grid up as long as we have left align this you know basically to the, the container uh, from everything that's been there so we'll take the type tool and good the guide shows up so we'll get there well and i'm just going to put on here um, and this right here is a spiffy footer where you can put stuff. <laughs> oh God, the things I come up with. We'll make it white and we will increase the size. That roughly right on there is fine. Then over here, right aligned, we're gonna have just a Facebook and Twitter icon, which is pretty standard. So if I type in Facebook, we're going to go ahead and get the name. Um, we can choose to use, uh, we'll use Facebook official. So we'll grab that name real quick. Right there. That size, uh, we could probably go down just to 50. To generate it, download it. 
open it up, show in folder rather, and we'll come down and we'll drag it in. Oops, that's one thing. You want to make sure that you don't have anything selected when you drag that in. So I'm just going to put it here. Oops, and kind of forgot we need to invert that and make sure that's white. So we'll come back over here, make that white, generate, download, and repeat that annoying process one more time. Perfect. So 50 is pretty much perfect. And if it was too big or a little bit bigger or smaller, it probably would have been off. So I kind of lucked out there. And we'll do that one more time for Twitter. So we'll go back. I'll type in Twitter. And we'll use the Twitter square just to keep things consistent. And so it is FA Twitter square. There it is. And generate. Download it and drag it in. So we'll put it right around here. Make sure this is right aligned. There we go. Maybe move over just a tad bit more. And there we go. That is our very simple example of a web design slash web app landing page. Okay, so basically from this point on now, uh, we also want to do a fact page just to show, for instance, in Angular and React and Vue, you know, how you create different pages. So that will kind of help us. So in the next section, we're going to go ahead and create that fact page. I'll see you then. All right, so let's go ahead and create that fact page. The first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna rename this. It's kind of not very user friendly. We'll just call this desktop. And then we're gonna hit Control C and then Control V. So it automatically just duplicate everything and stick it over here to the right. And so for our fact page, we're not going to have a hero section, which is pretty standardized when you're coming, when it concerns web design at least. Um, so we'll go ahead and get rid of that. We're going to leave these two blips right here, but get rid of this call to action and then get rid of everything here. Uh, we're also going to ungroup the grid and then get rid of these two things right there. We're actually going to use this right here as a kind of a question and answer containers. But first, let's focus on this top part up here. So we're going to move this up just slightly. And we're going to put in FAC. And then for our lorem ipsum text, we're going to leave it there. But we're going to make sure this extends out to the very right side. Simple enough. Now let's take uh, this. We don't need a this text right here. Right click, by the way, if you had it grouped and hit ungroup. All right. And now what we'll do here is pose a question at the top and then in the bottom in a smaller paragraph font we'll have an answer. So I will go ahead real quickly and just type in will this allow me to do that other thing? All right. Cool. We'll take that. Control D this time. The whole control C, control F was getting a little bit annoying, admittedly. And we're going to take this down. Let's take a look at our size. I think the size of this text over here is 33. So we'll keep things consistent and put 33. Um, I'm not even really happy with the difference between these two because there's not much of a noticeable difference. So you can, you know, kind of, again, this is called visual hierarchy in design. Uh, you can reinforce that through color through making this bold um, or making it larger. And I think that's the direction that I'm going to take it. So something like this large. And then we'll take this text down here beneath it. And I'm going to copy and paste. Again, you can use lorem ipsum. That's probably the standard thing that you should do. But I had some other stuff I had off screen. So I'm just going to use that. We're going to leave that there. Again, you want a good sp 
space between all your elements. So I'm just moving them around with my keyboard. Uh, let's see here. All right, that looks pretty good in my opinion. All right, so once you're satisfied with everything, we can go ahead and take everything, repeat grid, get it all the way out to the very edge. Well, actually just to the very right over here and then extend these as needed. And again, this is a, it would help at this point to get up our, our grid real quickly just to see. And so right there is perfect. All right, so we'll hide our grid and we'll pull this down. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we'll make it go uh, three right there. We'll take everything right here, holding shift, drag it down somewhere over here. We're gonna take this and increase the height. So we'll drag this up, keep on dragging up, drag it up more. Right there is perfect. And also notice the spacing vertically doesn't match this here. So we'll just drag that down a bit. What are these 43 and this is 40. trying to get it to match up a 43. 45 is fine. There we go. All right. And that is our fact page. Very cool. All right. So let me hide this real quick. So this is our, um, our, our design so far at this point. So in the next section, what we're going to do is also add a mobile version. But you know what, real quickly before we do that, let's hop into the prototype tab and let's I uh, get some of these, like an actual interactive prototype working. So when somebody clicks on this link right here, this FAC link, you can see that little blue thing. We just drag it over anywhere over onto this artboard and it gives you options by the way uh, for a target, your transition type, and also your easing options and a duration animation. I'm just gonna leave them here by default. I'm not really too worried about that. Um, also, if we click on the logo, we'll make it go back to the home page. Same thing with if they click on home. Fact doesn't go anywhere. Nothing really goes anywhere else apart from that. So now uh, it doesn't really matter which tab. If we click on play, Sorry about that, it made it real large, so I had to pause and fix it. And I here we go. So you can see the viewport right down there at the edge. So it makes it scroll like an actual web page or an app of some sort. We click on FAC, and there we go. Looks a little redundant with the same content, but uh, you can adjust those manually if you wish. All right, so like I said, in the next section, we're gonna go ahead and create a mobile version of this layout to see how the layout should respond when we're using Bulma uh, in the grid system. All right, so let's go ahead and create a brand new artboard. So we'll click on the artboard tool and we're gonna choose iPhone 6 or 7 Plus. So the reason we're doing this is because uh, instead of just copying like the home page, for instance, or the desktop, um, and then pasting it or duplicating it, it's not gonna be in the size of an actual phone. So we're gonna start by scratch. Coming over here, we'll just choose, you know, whatever you wanna display it on. Uh, if it's a tablet, choose iPad. I mean, if it's a modern smartphone, choose this iPhone 6, 7 Plus. You can see it's substantially smaller. Uh, but we don't have to really worry about that. We are gonna make sure it's uh, kinda, it's gonna need to be longer to fit in all of this content within here. So now it's going to be a matter of intense copying, pasting, and resizing and deleting. So we're gonna select everything. So I take all of our elements here, Control C, and then over here, we're going to paste them all in. Actually, no, we're not. What we'll do is select them. I forgot, it kind of 
doesn't maintain the layout. Control C, Control V, and then we drag it all the way over to here. All right. So now you can see we have a little bit of work to do in terms of uh, adjusting this layout here. So to do that, uh, what we'll do is first move this logo over and we're going to scale it down quite a bit, maybe around 24 as I have it. We don't need any of this stuff, so we're gonna delete it. Instead, we're gonna have your, your uh, standard hamburger menu over here to the right. We're also going to take this and scale it in. I'm also going to make it slightly less tall right there. Then we're going to take our line tool here. Just starting up here near the top, hold shift, drag out. I actually like the default color here for the uh, border color. We'll leave it there. If you want thicker, of course, you can adjust the thickness. So control D, hold shift, drag down, control D, hold shift, drag down, make sure they're even in margin. Um, I think that's a little bit too big. So I'm going to select all three, holding shift and scale it down right around there. And this is actually pretty consistent with the uh, Balma responsive navigation icon. All right, good. So now we got that done. Let's focus on this big section right here. So we're just gonna drag it in, make sure it's up at the top, and yeah, right around there is pretty good, I'd say. We can always adjust this momentarily. And then we're gonna take uh, our three blips of content. All right. This is going to be scaled down quite a bit, so we'll achieve this through media queries and CSS. Um, let's see. Maybe something like that right around there. For this size, I'm going to try like 17 maybe. We also need to find the right side of this and drag it in. Probably a little bit larger, so we'll try 22. All right, that's looking good. Uh, this is going to be scaled down just a bit. So we'll take our services, scale that down as well. And again, we have some margin issues. They have a lot going between the bottom of this text and the top of this button. Uh, we can get Control G so we don't have to keep on selecting each one of those. And let's see. And I'm just experimenting with the uh, layout here just to see how I want everything to be spaced out in a mobile version. All right, I think that looks good right around there. All right, so next we'll take this cog. And again, it's in its own container. Uh, or its own column, it's just a single column. However, that column will expand to 12 columns or 100% width on uh, the desktop or mobile version rather. So we're gonna scale this down holding Control and Shift or Control and Alt, sorry. Sorry, not Control, Shift and Alt. And then we'll take this, we'll scale this down a little bit as well. And also our content right here. Let's see what the size of this is. It's 22, so we'll make this, oops, we'll make this 22 as well. And also, we can just make it zero to be default, whatever the line height is. And then we have our uh, three blips of testimonials right here. So we don't need three of them. Actually, we can ungroup the grid real quickly. I'm going to scale everything down. All right. Right click, ungroup. We're going to take this and scale it down. Right around there. And 
This looks good. Maybe drag this up just slightly. Right there. Great. And then we can group and repeat the grid downwards. Just three times. Let's go ahead and select our artboard. And we need to make this taller. So right around 20 or 2000 for me. I'm going to scale this down as well. All right. And I believe I forgot, or I did not copy this section right here or this piece of content. So let me copy that real quick. I think I pasted it right there. There we go. And I just realized this is this artboard is going to have to be a little bit longer. So put in 2300. Maybe not quite that long. So 2150. Drag this down. All right. So we'll have these two come in. Uh, they might be right aligned, actually. And then. This right here. Something like that, I think will work. 28, try 22. And right now, I'm just gonna copy this and then just delete it because it's not based on a uh, an area where we drug out the size. So let's go ahead and make this white. And then also fix that to zero. For some reason, putting zero was not working. So to put it at 13. And I have to readjust this because I put an actual enter There we go. That's why the zero thing wasn't working. There we go. All right, sorry about that. Sometimes things get a little bit tricky to deal with. All right, cool. Okay, so that is the mobile version of the app. So if we click on this artboard specifically and hit play, we'll be able to see what it looks like on a mobile version. So if I just bring this in a bit, we can scroll all the way down and this is what it should look like on a smartphone. All right, so in the next section, we're going to make this hamburger icon menu actually work and show a drop down menu that shows on smartphones. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make this here, this button work. So what we'll do is copy this, paste it in, and the Balma default drop down menu uh, is really simple. So to do it, what we'll do is just create a rectangle right here, maybe roughly right there. And we're going to have our four links, which are home, about, features, fact, and as well as our join now call to action button. So we'll go ahead and left click right here. This will be home. I actually kind of like the color by default already. And so we'll copy and paste or control D to duplicate it. Right around there, about 31 pixels difference. About, hit escape, control D. Why isn't it showing me the guys for the about? Oh, well, I said it was 31, so right there. And then we'll do features, D, control D, and then FAC. All right, uh, that's good right there. 
Oh, by the way, you probably could have also used the repeat grid. You know what? We're going to do that just so I can show you uh, the slow and inefficient way, which I just showed you, versus the much better way. By the way, there are also dividers between each of the links by default when you're using the Balma framework. So I have just a simple uh, dividing line. Uh, it's pretty light, so around D4, D4, D4 for the color code will work. So now we take these two, holding Shift, and we choose Repeat Grid. Ta-da! That, that's the intelligent way of doing it. All right, don't do it the first way I showed you. So now ungroup the grid, and now we can just change these right here. So this is about, this is features, and this is frequently asked questions, hit escape. Finally, we also have our call to action button. So let's go grab that. So it's those two items, and control D, drag them over right to here. Perfect, it actually lines up pretty good in terms of the padding between all of our elements. So that's real important, like I mentioned. Also, we don't need this border. We can give it a shadow like that. All right, awesome. Now, one thing that also changes, there's a cool sort of micro interaction slash micro animation that takes place when you click on this right here, this hamburger, it uh, transforms into an X to close out. So what we can do is I uh, skip rid of these three. We'll take this, hold shift to make a 45 degree angle. And we'll go ahead and we'll duplicate it with control D. And then I'm just holding it shift. So it's creating another uh, 45 degree angle the other way. And then just bring it to the center. Now it's a little bit big. So take both of them, scale them down, probably right around there. Get that moved over with our arrow keys as needed. And there we go. So, uh, all right, awesome. So let's watch this happen. Um, in terms of an actual prototype. So let's click over the prototype tab. We'll click on, oh, real quickly, we'll go back to design and select these three, hit Control-G to group them. Uh, we'll do the same thing with this over here, these two items, Control-G to group. So now we click on this, it takes us to this page. And if we click on this, it's gonna take us back to this page. Now, if we click on FAC, that's going to take us to a FAC page, but that's going to be the very last step. Um, so let's go ahead and click play right now. Oops, make sure you uh, select on this artboard first and then click play. I'm going to drag this over, get it into view so that we can actually see it. And all right, so let's click this. There we go. Shows us exactly what's going to happen. All right, awesome. So now uh, in the next section, let's go ahead and we will replicate this artboard and create a FAC page, um, which will simply list out all this stuff, except in smartphone version. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna take this artboard right here, uh, Control C, Control V, and let's go ahead and gut it. So we don't need this hero section. We're gonna change this to FAC. And we're going to leave this little lorem ipsum text, get rid of the button. And we're going to get rid of well, almost everything else. So we'll take this and move it up. Because remember, the uh, containers are in, or the fact you know, for the questions and answers over here, they're inside the same sort of card container. So what we can do is just adjust it for those questions. So uh, to do that real quickly, I'm going to copy off screen just uh, the title that we had before. So will this allow me to do that other thing? <laughs> uh, okay, and then also 
we have the secondary text. Um, well, first let's go ahead and just copy that and we'll paste it. Get rid of this. And the size, something like 22. I may go a little smaller than that. Maybe like 20. And I, for that text, I'm gonna copy this again. All right, paste that in. We're gonna extend this. Notice how these aren't updating down here. So I'm just going to, oops, I'm gonna back up actually. We're gonna ungroup the grid, delete these. All right, and then I uh, right click ungroup. There we go. Now we can take them and repeat the grid. A bunch of times, yeah, right there is good. Actually, to make life simple, this goes down as far as we can, probably right around there. Take all this. Oh, there's that extra text, I never saw it. There it is, so we did copy it before. It's probably off screen right there too as well. All right, that's good. And we'll move all this stuff up right there and then take our size right there. All right, awesome. So let's hop into the prototype section. And when somebody clicks on FAC, they're gonna go to the FAC page. When somebody clicks on company, they're gonna go back to this original page. If somebody clicks on this menu, they're gonna go to the menu page. And if somebody clicks this X, yeah, they go back. Okay, that's good. I'm just trying to make sure everything's kind of uh, wired as it needs to be. So again, somebody clicks X there, FAC. All right, that's good. So let's give it a go. Hop over here to design. We'll choose this artboard, hit play. Get everything going again here. All right, click this. We click FAC, and there we go, I like it. And then we click my company, it goes back there. We click this, we click uh, X out of there. Uh, we go back to FAC, we click on the menu. Cool stuff, works well. All right, so that is it for this section. And now that we have a prototype design of our fictional app or website here um, done just for, you know, both for desktop and mobile view. The next step is to start new projects for React, Angular, and Vue.js. And we're gonna take a look at, you know, each one one at a time from the very beginning in terms of setting up a project uh, to the very end in terms of, you know, uh, getting the CSS and, everything integrated as needed. And that way we can really see some of the core difference, differences and the basic differences between each of uh, these pieces of JavaScript technologies. All right, so I'll see you very shortly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get up and running and get started with Vue.js first for our comparison project. Now, getting started with Vue.js and installing it is pretty straightforward, and like other JavaScript frameworks, you're able to install it through several different methods. All right, so the first is installing Vue.js with a CDN, which is a content delivery network. And this allows you to use the HTML script tag to use Vue within your project, and it's a pretty quick and easy way of getting up and running. Uh, the recommended CDN to use uh, is mentioned on the written version of this tutorial, which you can find in the description here on YouTube if you're watching at YouTube, or on Corsetro page uh, where the course is located at. All right, so I, you can find the exact script source you know, equals here, um, as well as the written tutorial. We're not going to use this method, though, for this uh, course, so because we're going to be using Node.js, and we can install it. So the other two options are installing Vue.js through NPM, which is the Node Package Manager, 
and you can install it through the command line. And this is ideal when you have a more robust project or an existing project that you wish to integrate Vue with, as Vue is really just relegated to the Vue. Now you must have Node.js installed along with NPM as well. So we're going to need to check this. So to check if you have it installed, if you're not sure, in the command line, you just type in node hyphen V and then also NPM hyphen V and it should spit out version numbers. Now, if not, then you need to install it and you have to go to nodejs.org right here, downloads and choose either the Windows or Mac installer run through all the default options. By default, the Node Package Manager, NPM, will be included and install it. And then simply reload or close down your console, your command line, and then go back and run these two commands and they should be there. The command to simply run it after you have it installed, which we're not going to actually run it, but I wanted to show you is NPM install view and then save it as uh, a in your package.json if you already have your project set up. Now, we're not gonna use this method. The third method that we're going to use is installing Vue.js with the Vue command line interface or CLI. And it makes it quick and easy just to start up a Vue project with basic scaffolding in place. And it provides you with several options that you can also use to set up routing and such. So this is the installation method that I mentioned that we're going to use for our project here. So to get started in the command line, head over to wherever you store your code projects at. And we're gonna run npm install global and view hyphen cli so the package is called view hyphen cli and we're using uh, the global flag to make sure that we only have to install this once on our machine so it's going to run through i'm going to pause it until it's finished all right so it's done here and to access the cli all we have to do is just type in view and if you hit enter, it'll give you commands and options. Now there's not a lot here, uh, so it's fairly straightforward just to get started. So to start a new project, we type in view, init, and basically this is the command for generating a new project from a template. We're going to specify Webpack, which is a build tool for handling ad sets, and then the project name. So I'm gonna name mine simply compare hyphen view. And that's the naming convention that we're going to use for React and Angular as well for the project names uh, a little bit later on in this course. All right, so when you run this, it's going to give you a series of prompts, all right? So we can see in the parentheses, this is what it will enter if you just hit the Enter key. So we're just going to leave these all typical. All right, so now we also have the view build. And the one that it's defaulted on is the runtime time plus compiler, which is recommended for most users. Uh, you can use your keyboard's up and down arrow keys to toggle on between these. We're just going to use the one that is recommended for most users. Now, do we want to install the view router? Uh, we're going to hit Y for yes, simply because we do intend on having uh, a fact page, which we already designed earlier in the course in Adobe XD. All right, do we want to use ESLint to lint your code? We don't want linting. We don't want uh, any type of testing. So I'm going to hit N for the next three questions. All right, and there we go. So uh, after that, all we have to do is CD into our new project folder. All right, and we run npm install as the CLI simply generates our package.json based on our uh, information up here, then we have to run npm install. And this is unlike, for instance, the Angular command line interface where it runs npm install for you automatically. All right, so it is finished. And at that point, your project is ready to go. And we can run a, another command to actually make the project show up live in the browser. And it will automatically rebuild and reload the browser upon certain file changes while you develop your app. So the command to run is npm run dev, which I will have ran as we develop this project uh, so that we could see it in the browser based on the changes. So it just loaded up. It automatically launches whatever your default browser is. Uh, I'll drag it over here real quickly. And this is our basic view project right here. Awesome. 
So in the next section, we're going to go ahead and get started and actually begin developing our app based on the mock-up that we produced earlier in the course here in Adobe XD. Okay, so in this section, we're going to take a look at the basic structure of a view project and also really pay attention to components and how they work. So the first file that's worth taking a look at is right here at index.html. All right, so the thing to really pay attention to is div ID is app. All right, so this kind of serves as the entry point of the app and everything in terms of the view is going to be placed within this div ID. Now, we also have to pay attention to the name that ID is bound to. So outside of that, let's go to the source and then the next file we want to take a look at to understand is main.js. So we're importing view and app and the router because we did specify we want the router um, for our project. Next, we create a new view app by running new view. And an element is bound to the app ID. And this is corresponding to this right here. And then we're passing in the router. And then the template is app and the component is app, and this is in relation to this imported line right here. So this is corresponding to this file right here, which is app.view. All right, so this is a basic component, and this is the entry point of our app. So we have three different sections. Components have templates, we have the script, which defines the logic of our app, and then we have styling for our styles. All right, so very simple to understand. Everything is contained within a single file for each component and they are reusable. All right, so the thing that we wanna do here uh, is open up components. So we have a default hello.view that the CLI generates. And again, same situation. We have a template, we have a script for any of our logic, and then we have our styles. So for our app that we designed in Adobe XD, just to take a quick look at it again to help us understand, so we have to look at this layout in terms of their the structure and how we want to structure the components. So if you want to think about it this way, we have the main app component that we just covered, which is app.view, and think of it as being an all-encompassing component that will contain everything. And then we must decide, okay, what about this navigation or this header? Uh, should that have its own component or not? Uh, we also need to think about the fact that we do intend on having you know multiple pages. We designed one of them, which is the fact page right here. Uh, basically, this content right here, all this stuff is unique as well as all of this content over here is unique. So each of these, which we'll call this home, will have its own component, as well as fact will also have its own component. Now the header or the navigation bar up here, as well as the footer are elements that we want to remain on the page at all time, despite you know which page they happen to be on, all right? So let's go ahead and create our home component and our fact component. And then we'll also a little bit uh, in the next lesson, we'll go ahead and start doing the HTML for our uh, header up here. And we'll see that we'll be able to declare the template for the header and the footer right within our app.view. Because notice we have this tag called router hyphen view and this is where our components will be put into for our home and also our FAC. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna take this hello view. I'm gonna uh, right click it and just rename it. And we're gonna call this home. Now, if you're running the npm rum dev command, the app will break at this point uh, because we're renaming files, but we'll address that a little bit later. Um, we can go ahead and gut everything between these two HTML elements. We want to live the, leave the div class hello here as well as the template, template, otherwise they will break. All right, so we're just going to call this one home. Or I'll just put in home there just temporarily. 
We're going to rename it here to home. We'll rename this class to home. Uh, we don't need any data right now, so we can just get rid of that. All right, that's good. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and also create a new file. We're going to name this fac.view. Go back to our home. Just going to copy, hit Control A and then Control C, and then paste everything in here. And for this one, again, uh, we'll just make this fac. The name's going to be fac. We'll change this inner text real quickly just to the fac right there and go ahead and save. All right, so next we need to go into our router. So we have a router index file right here. And this is where we define the paths or the URLs along with which component they are associated with in their names. So we don't have a hello component anymore. We have home. I'll just copy and paste this here. And we'll copy this and then also import fac. All right, so this uh, starting uh, path for, or, or the root of our app, we're going to make this home. We're going to put a comma after this first object and create a second one. And this will lead to fac. And the name, of course, is fac right here and here. And that's it. So this is where you set up all your individual routes. And if you were to fully build out this app, of course, you would have more objects here to define the other pages. So that looks good right here. So let's go ahead and save. And now uh, make sure you have your npm run dev command going. And here at localhost 8080, we'll see that we have just this logo because we haven't removed it from the template. But we see we have home, which is being put in the router view. And then also if we go to fac, we'll see it changes to fac. All right, so that's basically how uh, the view application works in terms of basic setup and as well as the router and the components. Now, of course, we're gonna get into much more in depth uh, topics regarding those two aspects. So in the next section, we're going to get focused on integrating the Balma CSS framework and also probably begin writing out the HTML for our header. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and get our Balma CSS framework installed. Uh, so with Balma, you can include it with a script tag in the HTML or you can use NPM to install it. Uh, so we're gonna use that method. So um, by the way, my, the console that I'm using is called CMDER right up here, if you can see the, um, the, the heading there. Uh, and you can right click at the bottom and create a new console. So I've done that already, as you can see right here. So I'm leaving this uh, NPM run dev up here open, I'm creating a second one just so I don't have to keep on rerunning that, uh, just to run some an, an additional command to NPM install our Balma. So real quickly, in the project folder, we'll type in NPM install Balma, and then save it as a dependency in our package.json. All right, so once that is finished, We'll go back to our app here. And Balma now is installed here in a Balma folder. Um, and we don't really don't need to worry about that, um, but that's where it's located. So uh, to get started, we have to actually import it. And where we're going to import it is within our basic, our, our, our starting app here um, component. And so the way you define this is we have two different steps to concern ourselves with. So at the very top, we're going to put this command, which is at import, and then the location. Now notice it's a SAS file. Balma does also include a CSS version as well. And if you just n navigate to the node modules Balma folder, you'll be able to find out the exact location of that folder. Uh, but we're gonna use SAS so that we can harness the power of SAS if you wish. Now this won't work if we save it, uh, instead, right here in the style tag, we have to add lang equals sass. 
Now, once we do this, we can see that we have some issues here because SAS does not use these semicolons and these brackets. So we delete these. And by the way, we, we're not even gonna need these anyways, but I'll go ahead and just save it anyhow. Now, if we check out the browser, we see we have an issue, module not found, can't resolve SAS loader. So because we're using SAS, we have to run NPM again to install an additional package. Now, in order to get this work, we have to actually install three different packages. So npm install node hyphen sas, sas loader, and style loader. So style loader, save dev to save it as a development dependency. All right, we'll go back to the other console and run npm run dev if you already have it running just hit control c and hit y and then run npm run dev and it will bring back up our project so now balma is actually loaded here probably can't tell but the font does change slightly okay so i uh, we're going to go ahead back here to our project i'm going to hit control b to get up our sidebar and we're going to create a new SAS file just here in the source folder. So we'll go ahead and type in mq.sass. So the mq is uh, just short term for media query. You can name it whatever you want. And right off the bat, we're gonna create just a couple variables in here in SAS, as well as I copied and we're going to paste some different uh, mixins that we can use to designate uh, for viewports like mobile, tablet, tablet only, desktop, desktop only. So uh, first is just a primary color, which is that sort of like that teal color. And then next, I'm just going to copy and paste. And, and by the way, I copied and pasted this from uh, some of the SAS files from the Bama uh, folder in the node modules. So um, tablet, desktop, widescreen, full HD. This is just designating the sizes of all of them. And then I'm going to finally copy and paste in uh, these mix-ins right here for mobile, tablet, tablet only, desktop, and desktop only. And you'll see how we can we, we will eventually utilize these when we start writing out just a little bit of custom CSS uh, going on in the future. All right, so we'll save this. We're gonna go back to our app view and we're going to import it. All right, so to import it, again, very simple. We'll just go ahead and type at import, MQ. All right, we'll save that. I'm gonna copy and we're gonna go to our home view and again, we wanna make sure style lang equals sass is added here as well. We can just delete all this stuff for now. And we're going to import that. And by the way, we have to change that because we're up one folder there. We'll save that, copy this, go back to our fac. Style equals lang. Oops, sorry, <laughs> lang equals sass rather, and import our media queries. So we'll save. All right, awesome. So now based on our mockup in the next section, we're gonna go ahead and start writing out the HTML for our navigation here. Okay, so let's go ahead in our source and we're gonna just follow right here in the app.view. And this is where the HTML and associated CSS is going to be placed uh, for the header portion. So this router view, we're gonna leave it here. However, we're going to get rid of this image source. Okay, so right now it would be worth uh, referring back to the Balma CSS documentation to see if there's any specific elements that are already in place for something like a navigation bar or a header. Okay, so here I am at balma.io forward slash documentation overview start. Okay, so uh, if we click on the layout tab, um, we can see we don't have anything here. We do have uh, like a hero section. We'll use that eventually as well as a footer section. 
If we click on components though, we can see we have a nav section. All right, so we did refer back to this uh, earlier in the course when we were working with an Adobe XD to see kind of you know how the default nav bar is laid out, which is right here. So it gives you some example HTML to use and to refer to based on your particular needs. So I pretty much followed this you know relatively closely. However, I did adapt it you know um, to go from something like this to something like this up here at the top. As you can see, they're basically the same almost. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started writing out our HTML. I'm gonna hit Control-B just to get rid of that sidebar. And all right, so the first element that we're gonna add is a class of nav. So div class equals nav. And a uh, helper class, we can actually add a shadow with has hyphen shadow and this is optional you don't have to add it but it's just barely noticeable so I'm choosing to add it and then inside of here we have div class container and container is also specific to Balma and it's defined and it adds a you know a, a centered container um, from which you can place all of your content now you probably wouldn't add that if you wanted a fluid width layout all right Next here is also specific to the nav component. So div class equals nav left. And this is going to hold our logo. So we're going to put in a class nav item. And this is another item or class rather that we add for individual items like a logo, uh, the individual elements um, for our links and such. So my company. All right. So just after the closing tag of nav left, we're going to add in a span class of nav toggle. So span class equals nav hyphen toggle. And this is for the hamburger icon menu. And the way they have that set up is inside we have three additional spans, which serve as each of the three horizontal lines that make that icon up. So there's a spans opened and closed. So copy that, paste it three times. We will we'll, uh, come back to this though to make it actually work and add um, some view specific functionality there. But we're gonna leave it like that for now. So div class, oops, div class equals nav right and nav hyphen menu. Again, we're gonna come back to this and add some I uh, view specific stuff inside of that particular class. All right. And next here is where we have our four links uh, right here. So home, about, features, and fact. So ordinarily you would use like an ahref um, or like a unordered list or something. But for us, we're going to be using uh, something specific to view which is router link so router hyphen link all right two and you can think of this kind of like the href so we have our first one is going to be home but first let's add a class of nav item and i'm going to add my own class of r hyphen item and we'll define that later on all right so router link so now we take this and we copy and paste it. We have four primary links there. Each one of these, for now, I'm just going to make them all point to fact because I'm not creating the other uh, pages. It'll be a little bit redundant for the purpose of this course. So features, about, and fact. All right. And then we also have an additional button. So div class equals nav hyphen item. And again, I got most of this, uh, this scaffolding, if you will, from uh, the example on the nav component page that we just took a look at at balma.io. So we add p class equals control. And here we have a class equals button is hyphen primary is for designating the primary color uh, that's associated with our theme here. So we're gonna make that, that, that button a primary color and also is outlined. And this is a class that makes it so that the 
uh, button is not outlined because if you recall right here we made it kind of hollow well not kind of hollow it is hollow so let's come down here and close that a tag here and then we put in inside of the button a span class of icon close that out and also i class equals fa for font awesome and fa hyphen download now we didn't actually include font awesome yet so let's do that just in a second let's create the actual text which is span join now and let's save it now if we refer back to the browser at this point if you have npm run dev already ran you'll see uh, we have the basic structure here um, I do have a little bit of a uh, margin or padding up there. We'll figure that out. But uh, we can see we don't have the actual icon um, showing up. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. If you go back to the Balma IO documentation, we'll see that at the bottom uh, we have font awesome. We need to include this in our index.html. So copy that. Control B, index, just uh, right here just above the closing head tag we'll save it and there we go let me check this out awesome so obviously the color's not correct but uh we will correct that and this uh top section right here I forgot it's based on the um, cli generating some css there which we didn't get rid of yet so let's uh, go back real quick to our app view and all this stuff we're just going to gut it. So let's get rid of that. Now we go back and we can see that that's much better. Okay, let's do some real quick uh, CSS slash SAS to get this thing working a little bit better or looking a little bit better, more consistent with our mock-up. So I'm just kind of dragging this over and we'll see if we can get away with just doing a kind of a split screen so you can see how it updates as we write our CSS. So we're gonna reference the nav class and we're gonna make the background and make sure you indent this correctly as that's how SAS works. Background color, we'll make it 383838 and that's, you can grab that color code by the way from our, our mockup, that's what I used. All right, save it and you can see how that updates. Um, we're also going to add um, we're going to reference rather um, the links inside of it in the hover state. So A, hover, hit enter and tab in. We're going to make them gray. So because right now if you hover over them, they're like that. Make sure you space that out, otherwise it won't work. Now we're pretty much staying the same. Next we also have uh, our, let's see here, nav hyphen left A. So we're going to style the logo and we're going to come in and we're going to make it white. And also we're going to make it font white of bold. There we go. Additionally, we're going to reference the links with a class of R hyphen item, which is a custom class that's not defined in Balma, but one that we're going to do instead. We're going to make the color C1, C1, C1. So we'll save that just to make these pop out a little bit more. Next, we're going to give them um, a padding. So the padding will be 0 0.5 rems on the top and then 1.75 rems on the bottom. We'll save it. So it's gonna space them out a little bit more. And then also just for mobile only, so we're going to add mobile here with a plus. We're going to make the color gray and their hover state. Sorry about that. And cool and hover. Give us some space here. We're going to make the background color really light. So F1, F1, F1. Uh, we can't really see this yet because the navigation isn't responsive and we can't see that, but uh, We'll get to that momentarily. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save, and that's good for now. Uh, so in the next section, we're gonna focus on getting this responsive 
navigation actually working. And if you look right here, we could see, we click on it, nothing happens. All right, so let's go ahead and get this uh, responsive navigation working. We can see it does toggle back and forth, but if you click on it, it doesn't work. It's also not styled very well. Can't really see it. So let's go ahead and address those issues. So I'm going to expand this just full width for now. And in our app view, we're going to focus on our span class nav toggle. So this is the actual hamburger uh, menu that you saw. Now we have to add a V on click and V on, by the way, is specific to Vue.js and it's a directive. So V hyphen on and on what? Well, click and we set a method here. So we'll just call this toggle nav. All right, so when this hamburger icon menu is clicked, it's going to call toggle nav and we'll define that momentarily. We're also going to add the V hyphen bind directive and we could choose style or class here. So we'll choose class equals and inside of this object, we're gonna make a class called is hyphen active to show or bind it to the state of is active. And that's a property that we will set in the component class. So what's gonna happen here is when this is clicked, it's going to add or remove is active from this class right here. And the reason we do is active is if we refer back to our documentation of Balma, and we go to our nav section. So we go to components nav, it's going to tell you for responsiveness, two additional classes are available. We have nav toggle for the hamburger menu on uh, mobile, nav menu for the menu that's collapsible on mobile. And we toggle right here is active, which is what we're doing now in the code on nav toggle, which is just down here, right there. And nav menu when nav toggle was clicked. Okay, so a little bit confusing, but you'll see how it works here. Uh, we also add the same thing right here. So we're going to copy this and on our nav menu, we're going to toggle on is active on this element based on whether it is clicked or not up here. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. It's not going to work yet. We have to go down to the script section, which is where uh, the component logic resides. So we're going to add in two different properties here and that's going to be data function we're going to return is active because that's what we're referencing here in the template and we're going to set it to false by initial initially uh, after this right here we're going to put in a comma and we're going to add another object rather in object or methods rather and Ours is called toggle nav. And we pass in this or we reference rather is active equals oops. This dot is active and that will toggle between true and false. So let's go ahead and save that. We'll go back to our project. Now if we click it, Look at that. So and you can see we have uh, our custom CSS where we added the light gray background uh, and changed the color of these a little bit. So now that is all working. Um, real quickly, let's just add the CSS to make that more noticeable because it's you pretty much cannot see it at the moment. So let's go ahead back down here and we'll reference nav hyphen toggle span which is for each of those three lines. And the background color, we're gonna to set to C1, C1, C1. So now we go back, if I can find it, there we go. Now we could see it. Cool. 
So now in the next section, we're gonna get focused on adding real quickly our footer just down here. Once the footer is done, then we'll focus on the home component and the fact component. And by the way, the fact component, <clears throat> we're not just going to hard code this, all this stuff in here. We're gonna pull from a public API just so I can show you how to do that. And also we can how we can see the differences between our uh, React view and Angular. Okay, so now let's go ahead and work on this footer that we have done here. It's obviously very simple. We'll just use Font Awesome for these two icons uh, and set up two different columns here and just have a single paragraph of text. We'll also add the quick, uh, oops, sorry about that, quick uh, CSS right here. All right, so let's come back up here. Now remember, uh, this is the router view. This is where our components for home and fact will reside. So we can just go underneath this and put in our footer because we want our footer to be always be displayed as well. So let's go ahead and write out the CSS for that. And as well, there is a footer in the layouts section or the tab of the balma.io documentation. So you can get or you can reference that if you want on your own. But we make a footer tag or element with a class of footer and color is primary. Div class here is container because we want everything inside of a container. And then inside of here, div class equals columns because we have columns in that container. And then also div class equals column Inside of here is where our first uh, paragraph goes. And I'm going to paste in just off screen or copy off screen some text here. And then we have a second one. We can get rid of this. Also, we're going to add a helper class has hyphen text hyphen write. And this is from Balma, just to write a line text. And then we're going to add in two links for social icons. So a class equals icon, href, not going anywhere because this is fictional. I class equals font awesome, and then font awesome hyphen Facebook, which is the name of it. And we wanna go ahead and copy this, paste it. And this is gonna be renamed to Twitter and we'll save. If we go back, we can see that the default color here uh, is just a very light gray, so you can't really see it. But here are our two icons. So let's go ahead and fix up this formatting just a little bit. So we'll go back, go to the style section. And really it's only just a few different things here. So we'll have in, pass in our footer, background color, is going to be the primary, and we're going to make this important. Oops, we're going to add an important here. Color is going to be white. All right, and then we're also going to reference the icons. We're going to make them a color of white and a margin left of 20 pixels just to move them away from each other. So we'll save that, and there we go. Now, obviously it's all scrunched up up here at the top uh, because our home content is just this home text. So that's what we're gonna focus on in the next section. So let's focus on taking this and making it look like this in our project. Okay, so now we're pretty much done working within our view, our main app view. So uh, what we wanna do now is get our uh, toolbar or sidebar up, go into components and work on our home view. So as we can see, it's very sparse. So what we're gonna do is refer back real quickly to our Balma documentation. And we can see under layout, there is a hero section. So the hero section is this portion right here. That's called a hero section. Ta-da. 
so exciting. Uh, so they have uh, some predefined CSS for us based on these hero sections. So you can refer to that as you wish, but that is roughly what I'll be using this uh, styling right here. But we're gonna make some adjustments, of course, um, to make it custom. So let's go back, get rid of home here, and section class equals hero. And inside of it, we're going to put in div class equals hero hyphen body. Not her body, geez. What the hell am I thinking about? And then div class equals container. And inside of there, we have our H1 class is title. And again, this is specific to Balma. And just for the fun of it, we'll use uh, interpolation here. Um, so heading. Interpolation, by the way, is just to show I. Uh, basically a property or a variable that's defined here in our component. So I just want to show you how that's done. It's very simple, basic stuff. All right. And then also we're going to have div class equals is hyphen two hyphen thirds column and is hyphen paddingless. All right. So there's three different things happening here is two thirds. So what is that exactly? We haven't really encountered the column structuring yet. Um, so if we go back to the Balma CSS, we'll see if we go all the way back up to the grid, we'll find that we have all of our grid classes. So we can see is two thirds is one of them. And the reason we're adding that to that specific class or that HTML element is because we have right here this subheading and notice we just don't we don't want it to go all the way across so that's why we say is two thirds all right and then also we also had a helper class there is uh, is padding list and column is what you always add um, to individual columns contained within uh, a columns div essentially all right so now inside of here this is going to be h2 and this is class equals subtitle and is hyphen four. We'll also use interpolation and call this subheading, which we'll recreate in the, uh, the, the logic section down below. All right, after that, we're gonna have a call to action button. So we're gonna put a class button. And again, this is from Balma. So they have a button section, which you can check out. We're gonna add is large, which is also from Balma and is primary to make it the primary color that we were using in our app. ID, we're gonna make this learn that's custom and then learn more. All right, great. So that concludes just the hero section. So if we save this, let's go ahead first before we check anything out and let's create the two properties that we referenced. So after name, we're going to put in data. We're going to return an object consisting of heading. Soaring to new heights, I believe is what we used. And then also a subheading. And this is just our lorem ipsum text. So I'm going to copy that and paste it from off screen. So we'll save that. And we'll go back to our app. There we go. So we have some issues here with uh, margin and padding. We don't have our background here either. Um, so let's go ahead and remedy that real quickly. So we put in our assets just right up here, a source assets for us. So our image, by the way, we don't need this. Um, so we'll delete that momentarily. So you want to open up the project files that we had with the clouds.jpg and you can just copy and paste that in where this needs to be. So I'm gonna right click and reveal an explorer and drag this over here, assets. I'm gonna get another one up. All right, so here's my project folder with the resources. I'm gonna take clouds and just put it right there, delete logo. And we'll go back. Oh yeah, it's not gonna show up because we haven't yet done the CSS for that. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll come down here. We're going to reference the hero class. 
the background is going to be URL. And this is coming out a folder to assets, clouds.jpg. We're also going to make the background size cover so it expands the entire size. And then uh, that's good right there. We're also going to reference the title inside of it. I'm going to fix some issues here. So on mobile, we want the font weight to be bold. On tablet, we're going to make the font size 2.5 rems. And then on desktop, we're going to make the font size large, larger than it is by default. So four rems and then margin top is two rems. We're also going to real quickly reference the H2, which is the subtitle. And we're going to change the margin there. So 1.5 rems on the top, zero on the right, two rems on the bottom, and zero on the left. And we're going to add important here to make sure this works. So we'll go back. There we go. Much, much better. So if we click on FAC, for instance, we'll see it instantly loads our FAC component. And there we go. All right, so in the next section, we're going to focus on the secondary content, which is this stuff just down here. And then the home component will be complete. All right, so now let's go ahead, go back, and control B just so you have a little bit more space. And just underneath this closing section tag, we're going to add another section. So section, class equals section. Inside of here, we're going to have a div class container. Inside of here, we're going to have a div class of columns. Uh, PD is going to be padding. That's a, a custom class we're going to create. And then is desktop. And that is specific from Balma. Now also inside of here, we're going to have a div class of column. So this is uh, a column inside of columns. So it's is one. And this is in reference to that little cog icon that we have. So uh, is one, by the way, is another way to structure the columns. You can either put a, like is two thirds or is hyphen one through 12. So it's only one column. So we're just going to put is hyphen one and then has text centered in order to center that cog in there. All right. Uh, so inside of there, we put in our I for the actual font awesome icon. FA cog is the name, if you recall, and then is primary. All right. Then next we have another column. Just to save ourselves a little bit of time, I'll copy this. And this second column, we're going to make is, oops, is hyphen one hyphen third hyphen desktop. All right, so that's also there in the grid section of the Balma documentation. So adding a, um, a device like desktop here after the column size will make it specific only to that actual device size. All right, so inside of here, this is where we're gonna put in just a P class of title and we're going to make it bold because if you recall, this is what it looks like right here. We can just copy this stuff, paste it in. Actually, let's close out the closing P tag real quick. And inside of here, we'll paste that. And then finally, we'll copy this one more column. And this we just simply put in column. It's one of the advantages of a flex box based layout. Uh, we can get rid of this class here and the strong. We're going to simply paste in some of that uh, lorem ipsum text that we have. So I copy it off screen, paste that in there like that. All right, so it's save. And this is what that looks like. So it does need a little bit of work, which we'll fix in CSS momentarily. So let's keep on going and focus on the testimonials right here. All right, so after 
that part, we're not going to create a new section. We're just going to add just beneath the closing section right here, div class equals columns. I'm going to put our PD class, which we'll reference shortly. Div class equals column. Sorry about that. All right, and then this is also specific to Balma. So we created that card layout. So if we go back to the documentation, we go up to elements. I believe it's in elements. No, maybe it's in components. There we go, card. Here's all the information you need to know about that. So it gives you different HTML scenarios based on this result, if you want that type of card, or this type of card, or this type of card, which is more specific to what we want although we're not going to have share buttons or anything like that. Nobody wants to share testimonials. So let's go back here. And the structure is div class card. Inside of here, we have div class equals card hyphen content. And then just our two text-based elements. So p class equals title. And I'll just close this out temporarily. And then P class equals subtitle. I'm just going to put in Gary Simon. So off screen, I'm simply going to copy and paste in uh, just uh, some default text. Let me go back to XD actually and do that. And this goes right here put a dash in front of my name. And then we're going to copy and paste everything from column and that ends right there. Two more times. So we have a total of three of them. So we'll save that. And with any luck, if your div structure is all correct, this is what we should have. So it kind of looks a little bit silly. Um, padding's not very good. So let's fix that with CSS. Come down here. And underneath our H2, we're going to reference our cog because if you look at back at the cog real quick, it doesn't look very good. So small and ugly looking. So let's go ahead and fix that. FA hyphen cog is a class that's attached to it. Font size, we're gonna make it uh, 40 pixels. And then learn that was a custom id that we added and desktop only we're going to make a margin bottom of two rems let me save this just so we could see the result there we go we kind of push things down from the learn more button right there to give it more even spacing all right let's also reference our pd class and it'll be the final element. So on tablet only, it's going to be a padding of 2 EM and zero or tablet and above rather, which is pretty much everything. So there we go. It spaces everything out. Awesome. So uh, now let's check it and see how it looks and responds on mobile. Great. Works well. All right, so in the next section, we're going to focus on this fact page right here. All right, so let's go ahead and make this ultimately look like this over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our sidebar up with Control B, click on our fact.view, and get started on that. So there's less quite a bit less CSS um, right here, or, or HTML rather, than the other one, other home component. So I, we're gonna gut out the fact name right there. We're gonna put in div class of container, because we want everything kind of centered within that containing element. Um, we're gonna add section, class equals section. Again, that's coming from Balma. Inside of here, we're gonna add our h1 class equals title make it fact, and then also h2 for a subtitle, class is subtitle, and is four, and that's for a size. So I'm just gonna type in real quickly, 
Morum Ipsum and all of that jazz. All right. And then after it, we're going to have our columns. So div class equals columns. We're going to add a v if actually, and we're going to use also a v for directive to iterate through a public API just to show you how that's done. But let's get the HTML <clears throat> ready first. So div class equals member column. So you start off with columns and then you add a column and is one third, right? Because we're going to have three of these, which will add up to 12. Inside of here, we're going to use cards again. So div class equals card. We're going to have div class equals card hyphen content. And then inside of here, we're going to have p class equals title. I'm just going to put my title for now. We'll use interpolation momentarily. And then answer. Oops, not yet. Uh, my answer. There we go. So if we save that, head on over to our app here. There we go. We got our fact, subtitle, my title, and my answer. So let's go ahead and actually pull from a public API. It's called JSON placeholder. I've, I've used it before in other tutorials uh, with Angular. Um, and it just allows you to just pull in some mock uh, JSON uh, data, like comments and pictures and posts and all that stuff. Uh, so to do that, we're going to use an HTTP library um, that works well with Vue called Axios. So to do that, we're going to use npm to install it. So let's go back to our console. We're going to type in npm install Axios and save it. All right, once that's complete, we'll go back to our project. And just after the script tag, we're going to import it. So we import Axios from Axios, very simple. All right, next here in our exports, we're going to have after name. We're going to have data. And this is an arrow function which we can use. And we can pass in facts or name it facts as an array. And also, if we have any errors as well. After that, we're going to put in a comma. And on the created method for a life cycle. So when this component gets created, then it's going to call upon Axios. So axios.get method, and then we pass in the URL that we want. Uh, let me just show you the site real quickly that we're going to access this from just for your reference. So this is the site. Uh, here's the URL if you want to visit. Uh, and it's basically just a fake online REST API for testing and prototyping. And it gives you uh, the resources that you can access right here. So we're going to use posts, which simply has a, a title and a body that we can access, which we will. So uh, real quick, let's close that out. And I'm going to paste that in. Actually, it's uh, HTTP, paste that in, and then posts. All right. And then we reference then, all right, the response. And we're going to make it, we're going to reference our facts. This facts equals the response dot data. Uh, it, sh it mentioned on a site, it returns like 100 results. We don't want that many. So we're going to use a slice method to return just the first 10. All right. And then optionally, we can catch it here, E. And this dot errors dot push E. All right. So let's go ahead and save that. And up here, we have to do a little bit of work with our view directives. So first we say v if facts and, so we put double ampersands, facts.length. Next we put over here v hyphen four fact of facts. Now we reference fact here through interpolation. So for the title, we'll put in double curly braces, fact.title, 
copy this real quick, and then also fact.body. So we'll save. And there we go. So uh, there's an issue where uh, based on Flexbox, there's uh, no wrapping right now. So it's kind of just those 10 results are just flying off to the side. So let's go ahead and fix up uh, that with some real quick CSS. So we'll come down here. And we're going to reference real quickly our PD. Oh, it's padding rather. 2.5 EM 0, 1.5 EM 0. And then also our answer. Margin top is 10 pixels. So we're just kind of pushing it away from the question. We're going to make the, it also gray. Not Gary Gray, Jesus. And then also finally columns will fix that issue with the wrapping. We place in flex wrap. We want it to wrap. So let's save it and go back. And there we go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so that's how you create a very simple app here using Vue.js. So hopefully that gave you enough uh, kind of experience or to get your feet wet with a Vue.js app. And now in the next portion of this course, we're going to focus on recreating the same exact app with our fact page and pulling in from an API, both within Angular and also React. All right, everyone, oh, Gary here. And yes, I'm very overdressed. It just came from my four-year-old daughter's dance rehearsal. I'm actually in the dance and I'm lazy. I didn't really feel like changing. So I just wanna knock this out. All right, so welcome to now the third section in this 100% free course where we're going to cover the app that we created in the mock-up process using Adobe XD, and then also the app that we created in Vue.js. We're gonna take that app now, and we're gonna see what it takes to create that app now in Facebook's React. Now, React is a JavaScript library that's there simply for the view portion of an app. All right, so if you're just hopping in, feel free to follow along with the course at the very beginning. Uh, you can also download the project files, which are going to contain the HTML and CSS that I will be pasting in. We covered that process of typing all that out in the Vue.js portion of the course, in case you're, on, you're wondering. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, welcome to this new section of this 100% free course about React, versus Angular versus Vue.js. Now we just covered Vue. Now in this section, we're gonna be covering React. And for those of you who are just kind of hopping into this course from this video, we're sort of here in the middle of the course, just beginning this view or the React section rather. And we just covered Vue. And what we're doing is we're taking this app, which by the way, we covered the whole design mock-up process and prototype process in the very first part of the course within Adobe XD. So you can check out the course page and just take this from the beginning if you wish. But uh, we just finished here, uh, this basic landing page in Vue.js, and we're going to recreate this from scratch in Angular and React as well, just to do a comparison. So all it is, just a static page here pretty much. We also have a fact page, which is pulling in this, these uh, fake question and answers here from an API. So we're gonna be doing that with all three frameworks just to get a grip on you know, how things are just set up from a basic standpoint. Okay, so what we wanna do is, you know, as with in Vue, as we already covered, you can add React to an existing project or you can start from scratch and you can do so, which is what we're going to do uh, with the React command line interface called Create React App. All right, so there's not many features associated with the React CLI. Really, it's just for starting project projects. Uh, thus, you have the name Create React App. So first, we have to install it. So we're going to run npm install hyphen g create React App. And by the way, if you're also just kind of jumping into this video uh, some, uh, as a beginner, then you do need to have NPM with Node.js installed. So head on over to nodejs.org if you don't have it and download it and then reload your console and you'll have access to NPM. Okay, so after that, we're gonna go ahead and access 
create React app in order to create an actual project. Because right now we just installed globally, which is the hyphen G or uh, flag. Now we have to access it and actually use it to create a React app. So create React app. And based on the previous naming convention from the view project, we'll use compare hyphen instead of view, we'll use React. Hit enter. All right, it just finished for me. By the way, I paused it, that's why it went so fast. And then we could see, based on the instructions at the top, we can CD into it. And then run npm start, which will build out the project and launch it in the browser. And here it is at local, tho local host, what is that? Local host 3000. All right, so here in the, in the next section, we're gonna go ahead and start working on structuring the components and kind of getting a feel for how everything is set up and laid out here in React. Okay, so here in Visual Studio Code, you can use whatever code editor you want. Um, here is the project that we just created and we're in the compare React folder. Okay, so somewhat of a familiar setup based on Vue.js, and it's also pretty similar when it comes to um, an Angular project. We have a Node modules folder here because we're using Node.js for this, um, which all three use. Uh, we have our public folder here. We don't have to worry about anything in there, but all of our code will reside here in source. And as you can see, it's very simple. Uh, the CLI creates just seven files here initially, and I. Uh, one that thing that's a little bit strange to me is that there's no or folder organization. For instance, we have a logo graphic just stuck in here with over here. It would have been a little bit better if they could create an assets folder off the bat, but really first world problems, right? Not a big deal. So uh, the main files that we need to worry about and all your components, they're, they're just uh, declared in just typical JavaScript files. So .js right here. We'll see we also have an index.js here. And this is what really helps get the project loaded up. We could see that we have a React DOM, we have a render, and we have our app ID passed in. And this is in reference to the component right here, app.js. All right, so the name of it, is, of course, is class app, and then we're exporting app to be used there in index.js. So I there's a few differences although also a lot of similarities when we're comparing these frameworks and libraries to each other so at the top which is consistent with all three of them we have our imports up here um, one thing that's pretty and quite different uh, that sets react apart from angular and Vue is uh, we have a the class app extends component really for angular this sort of thing i uh, i want to say sort of thing but within your class is really just designated for being solely for your component code but when we have our class app extending here of, the, of a component we have both the template which is defined right here within this return so all your templating your HTML although technically this isn't HTML it is JSX and I'll discuss that slightly in a bit um, goes right here within this return um, and then your component logic largely lies outside of render right here. So if you want to call or hook into component life cycles, for instance, you would do it out here. And we will do that uh, once we develop our little landing page app. All right. So uh, also your styling, you simply import your, your CSS file up top. So uh, in terms of inline styling, that's something that's not done here in React, so we simply import it at the top. Okay, so I, what we want to do is create, um, just to bring about more structure, I don't want all of my component files you know, being relegated into the same directory. Uh, we're going to create a folder called Components. All right, and inside of Components, we're going to create just a few different component folders additionally based on our needs. So let's head on over to uh, Adobe XD so I can show you the layout real quickly once again. All right, and here's the layout that we've been, we already designed and already did in view. And if we try to think about this in terms of component structure, uh, again, this is gonna be the same thing as view if you followed along there. Uh, first, we have our whole app interface 
And this is really where we would structure everything and we would consider it the actual app or in other words, this right here, this is the starting point of the app. Uh, going further into that, that we have our header here, our navigation. We also have a footer. Now these are two elements of our layout that we want to remain the same and we want to remain present uh, in all pages. So we can create components out of those. And then we have this middle section here, um, our content section, and this would be the content that's shown you know, when they're at the home page. And then this inner content here is where they would be shown when they're at, like for instance, a fact page. So there's really three different things happening here. We have a header, we have this intersection here, and then we also have a footer. So let's go ahead and create these elements consistent with that. So back when we were working within Vue, we didn't create components specifically for header and footer. We could we just stuck it right here in not not this file because we're working with um, a different. But in terms of st structure, we didn't create components here. I'm going to show you how to create components out of those headers and footers um, just for two different purposes, just to show you how to import or nest in another component, but also to show you how to create two different types of components. One is stateless, which I will explain shortly. So what we want to do is go ahead and create these files real quickly. So the first, rather folder. So the first folder we'll call header. And inside of here, we're going to create a few files. All right. So first, this header is going to be header.js. All right. Let's also real quickly create another one. This will be footer. Create another one. Oops. We don't want to create it inside of there. We'll create another one for fac. And then finally, one more for home. Keep on doing that. Sorry about that. All right, so we have our two pages here for home and footer, or sorry, home and fact rather, and then also our header and footer. All right, so the first thing, of course, we'll fo focus on momentarily is the header section. All right, so what we'll do is in app.js real quickly, we're gonna, going to just change things up just slightly here within the template. So I'm going to get rid of everything between this app class tag here. And by the way, when it comes to JSX, you can see there's some slight differences. For instance, uh, when you have a div and you're trying to specify a class, it's not class equals app, it's class name equals app. Very important, otherwise your uh, app will break. All right, so one thing we need to do is import the header. So at the very top, we did create that header file already. So I'm just going to copy this real quick. Actually, we don't even need logo, so I'll just change that real quick. So import header from components, header, and header. All right, great. So we'll save that. And inside of, let me take this real quickly, Control-A, Control-C to uh, copy all. Let's go over here and just paste this in. Now for our header, we're going to get rid of that. And we will also include a header CSS file a little bit later, but we're not gonna worry about that for now. All right, so we need to change this here to header. And we also have to export header right here. So inside of here, all I'm going to do is just type in my header and save it. Now let's go back to our app.js and inside of here, what we want to do is import that header component that we just created. So to do that, it's very simple. We just come in here. We open up like it's a HTML element essentially. So header and close it out like that. So we'll save. And this is what the app should look like so far. Very ugly, but let's keep on going anyhow. So. We also want to create a footer. So down here, we'll create a footer. At this point, the app will break because we didn't actually create the file. So let's take this, we're gonna copy that. And 
for our footer, let's create a new footer.js. All right, and we're going to paste that in. All right, so remember when I mentioned uh, there's two different type of components in React. We have a stateless component. Uh, this right here is a stateful component. So you have stateless and stateful. And when it comes to your stateful components, which is what we've been using right here so far, uh, the way they are declared is we import React and component from React. Now, if we want to transform this to a stateless component, then we remove the component import, and we also change this line right here. So the way we do this is instead of class header extends component, we do const footer, the name of our component here, equals function, arrow function, just like that. And this down here also has to change as well. So what we do is close that parenthesis and then also the bracket right here. And we also do not have a render method there. All right, so now this is has been transformed from a stateful to a stateless component. Now, in the long story short, use a stateful or a stateless component rather when it comes to components that you know aren't going to need any type of access to what's called the state or any type of really functionality. Okay, so for our footer, we know there's nothing really happening in our footer aside from just static template information. All right, so right down here, I'm gonna change this to my footer. Okay, and we also have to make sure we export footer. Then we'll go back to our app.js and we're going to import footer. This will be footer. I keep on doing that with my caps lock. Sorry about that, guys. There. Now we can go back to our app. And we have my header and my footer. Now, a little bit later on, we're going to, inside of here, put in our routes, which will load our two components, of which being home and fac. Uh, but before we get to that, in the next section, we're going to focus on integrating our Balma CSS responsive framework. All right, so we'll get started then. Okay, so well, the next step in order to integrate Balma, which is a CSS runner framework, is to use NPM to install it in order to give our app local access to the Balma framework. Now, this process is the same across all three uh, of the frameworks and libraries that we're using, which is React, Vue, and Angular. So to do that, we're gonna head on over to our console and I'm going to create just a new console window so I don't have to keep on uh, starting or running this npm start command. And by the way, I'm using a uh, console app called CMDER Commander. You can just Google that. And I, what we'll run here is, oh, by the way, let me get into the correct folder. We'll run npm install Balma and save it as a uh, dependency in our package.json file. And by the way, if you're kind of hopping into this video without um, watching the previous lessons here in the course, then um, Balma is just a, a growing in popularity in terms of uh, being a responsive front end framework. So I'm starting to like it and use it myself. All right, so now it is saved. So now it has been created here in a folder somewhere in node modules, okay? So actually, I'm gonna find that real quickly just to show you one thing real quick. Um, where are we at? Balma, there we go. You see Balma comes with just, you know, a straight up CSS extension if you want to import that, which is, it's located right here, um, or a SAS version um, if you want to use uh, SAS, the, you know, the, the preprocessor SAS. So we're going to use SAS because we did that already in Vue. Um, so it requires just a, a few extra steps to make sure that that works. So by default, when you create a React app, here with your create react app command line interface it's set up just to work with straight up css as we can see 
Um, so we have to modify a couple things in our package.json file if we want this to work correctly. So I just pause to bring up here. Um, let me just show you at the very top. We're here at the create react app uh, GitHub official doc page. And I uh, basically this will just give you a few lines that you need to paste in along with um, some inst instructions on how to uh, let me click on this. Where is it going? Why is it not going there? There we go. Um, there we go right here in terms of uh, what you need to do in order to get um, SAS compiling up and running. So as it mentions in package.json, we had the following lines to scripts. So we add these two right here. So we'll copy those. We're going to paste them. We'll get rid of the little plus signs here. And then also if you scroll down on that same page, we'll find that we have to also remove the standard start and build uh, and add these right here. So start and build, we'll go ahead and delete those, paste in with the, uh, instead this right here. All right, so now we can go ahead and save this. All right, so now we can create an app.sass file or SCSS if you wish. And I'm gonna use SAS extension simply because Balma is set up to work with SAS, so I'll just keep things consistent. So um, just click on one of these files randomly, create a new one called app.sass. All right, and then inside of here, this is where we're going to actually import the Balma SAS library. All right, so the uh, location, I'm just gonna copy this in real quick, is import node modules Balma, balma.sass. And then also Balma is set up to work with Font Awesome. So we're going to import that as well. And Font Awesome is used for icons, quick access to a ton of different icons. All right, so we'll save that. And I'm going to exit out of here, hitting Control C and just hit Y, and then hit the up arrow, hit NPM start. All right, so we have an issue here. And that's because we want forgot one step and we need to install and base by the way i skipped over this when we were at the um, github page just momentarily you have to run npm install save as a dev depends and that dev dependency npm run all all right so let's run npm start now Oh yeah, I keep on doing this. I am horrible. Sorry about that. There's another command that we need to install or package rather. npm install node sass chokader. <laughs> and then save that as a dev dependency as well. Yeah, sorry. I promise when we run npm start again, it is going to work. All right, now we're going to run npm start. There we go. All right, cool. All right, so now we're going to go back to our editor here. And if we click on app.css, we're going to notice that we have our Balma framework imported right here. All right, so the reason it's doing that is because app.sass, it will take this, it will compile it all down to app.css. All right, so we don't really change uh, anything in here. We still import, even though we're using SAS, we still import app.css right here. All right, so that's it uh, in terms of integrating our Balma framework. And inside of these folders, by the way, we will create um, SAS files. And once we save those SAS files, it'll create, you know, from footer.sass, it'll create footer.css. And then inside of footer, for instance, we'll import footer.css to work with the, uh, the, the CSS that was compiled from the SAS file. All right, so now in the next section, we're gonna focus on the very top of the layout just because it makes most sense. And that will be um, within our header component here in getting that looking more like this up here. All right, so let's work on this header now. Now, if you follow along with the last section of the course when we created the view app, well, 
I really don't want to have to rewrite all of the HTML uh, for everything again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that project, the view project, and I'm going to copy the HTML and make it work here in React. So uh, again, if you want, you know, if you want to be able to follow along and kind of understand essentially, you know, all the HTML process, then watch the view section of this course. All right, so here I have the view, um, the app.view, and at, this really has the header portion at the top. I'm gonna create, or copy rather, everything from div, nav, hash shadow, all the way down right to here, just above the router view section. So once I do that, I'm going to real quickly create a new file because we're going to um, copy and or replace rather every instance of class and change it to class name. So I'll create a new file. It doesn't matter the name because we're going to delete it. I'm just going to copy this or paste this in rather. And right here, uh, I'm just going to select class, control F, and we're going to replace and we click on this little button right here to class name and click on this button and I'll change them all to class name as need be. All right, so I'm gonna copy that now, select all and copy, delete that. We'll go ahead and delete that file right there. And now inside of here, take this and paste in everything that we had there. So now it's uh, giving us some issues here because we have this V on click stuff happening right here. That's for view. So we're just going to delete that and then also delete this V bind right there. All right, cool. So uh, of, of course this, this won't work as well because we have router link and that's specific to view as well. So we're just going to delete that right there. So if you have npm start still running on your console uh, and you save that file, this is what it should look like now. Because um, remember, it doesn't look like it's the, the actual full navigation, it doesn't have the dark background because we don't have any CSS yet working with that. All right, so what we'll do, um, let's get our CSS stuff working as well. So what we'll do at the top is we're going to import a file that doesn't yet exist, and that will be header.css. And then we're also create a new file in the same folder called header.sass. All right. And again, this is all simply coming from um, the previous view course, uh, or view project rather. Um, I'm just using the same SAS rule sets or CSS rule sets that I created before. So we're going to, I'm going to paste in this stuff right here. And it's not gonna work yet. We have to import our mq.sass file, which we haven't yet created. But at the top, we wanna import a file that we're going to create out here. And that's our media queries.sass file. And so this is something that we had set up in the previous project in view as well. So out here, I'm just gonna click on any of the files and create a new file called mq.sass. And I'm just going to paste in everything that we had there in the previous so this is just some um, initial variables that we want access to. Uh, and then there's also some mix-ins for um, responsive uh, CSS basically um, for our viewports right here. So we'll save that. We'll go to here and we'll save that. Notice that we'll create a header.css file with all that stuff now written. And then over here, we'll save our header.js file too. All right, so now if you save everything, uh, you'll find that if we go to our app here, that I, it's not really, we don't have our background, even though we set it already. And that's because we are going to go to our app.js, and we're going to take our import of this app.css and put it at the top here. And that way it doesn't override the settings that are in our header and our future footer. So now if we go back after saving that, we'll see that I, now we have our header working here properly. Okay, so next step is uh, within our header JS in the template. Remember, we removed the uh, four links here. So those links again are basically right here. 
So in order to get these working properly, we're going to have to set up uh, routing. And we'll sort of work backwards, and we'll just start here in header.js by, by uh, using the link attribute here. So link to, and this is the, the URL, class name is nav item, and sorry about that, and r hyphen item, and this is going to be the home. So again, we don't use regular ahrefs or anything like that. We're going to copy this and we'll paste it three times. This is going to be features, about, and fac. This will be simply, oops, we're going to point all three to fac because we're not going to bother making all of these pages. Now we also have to import link at the top. So import link from and react router dom. So we'll save that. And now it will error as I intended because we do not have react router dom installed. So we're going to install that real quickly in the console. So we'll come over here, npm install react router dom and we'll save it as a dependency all right once that's finished we're going to go back to our project here and we're going to head out over to our index.js file and we have to import a browser router from the package that we just installed so that looks like this right here so import browser router from our package that we just installed and then we have to make a couple adjustments here just under the app portion. All right, so we'll tab this in. And this is going to be, we're going to reference what we just imported. So browser, router. And the app goes inside of it. Browser, router. All right, that looks good. We'll save it. And now uh, we see our links here, which you know, don't work. They don't go anywhere because we haven't set up the routes yet. So let's do that real quick in our app.js. All right, so like I mentioned before, these go straight here in the middle, okay? So what we do is reference route, which we're going to have to import at the top. And for the home page or just the root page, we're going to set exact to path or sorry, to true, and path to just a forward slash, and the component that we're going to load for that URL is the home component. All right, so we haven't yet imported, so we have to import both of those at the top, both the route and home. So we're going to import route from the React router dome package, and then also Real quickly, I'll just copy this footer. I'm also going to copy and just paste that twice. This is going to be fac from fac fac, and then also home from home, our footer right there, home home. All right, so not all these files are created though. So fact, there's nothing in there and home's nothing in there. So let me just real quickly create that. So we have our header right here. I'm just going to, you know, one real quick tip I'm going to show you actually is if we create a file, we'll just call this home.js. Here in Visual Studio Code, uh, if you head on over to this section right here and you type in React, for instance, uh, you'll see that we have all these different you know, packages that we can install right here. And we have code snippets. So you can in install any of these or some of these and they'll give you access to certain just shorthand commands. So for instance, um, we just created a new component. Um, if I type in RSC, this will create a stateless, for instance, re for instance, React component. So remember I talked about, you know, this type of stateless component. Well, there we go. We just type in RSC and we get that 
Well, if we type in RCC, we'll see we have a uh, React component, and this is a stateful component. All right, just a quick tip there. So we'll save this here. I'll just call this here in the middle home, and we'll give this a name of uh, home right here, and also export it. I'll take all this stuff and just copy it. We'll go to our fact page and create a new file called fact.js and fact here, 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 and here. All right. So now you can see in the browser, if we're at the home page, we'll see it says home now because this is all the content that's inside of our home component. Fact doesn't yet load anything because we haven't imported that into our app.js file. So um, just underneath this, we're going to reference route. The path is forward slash fact and then component equals fact. So we'll save that, we'll go back to our project, and there we go. We can now see fact corresponds with fact, and home is over here. All right, great. So now in the next section, we're going to focus on getting this footer down here working. All right, so you can see here we have uh, just a simple footer down here. So let's work on that real quick. So let's go back to our code editor, your Visual Studio Code. And uh, what we're going to do now is I uh, come over here to our footer.js. And remember, this is a stateless component. And let's import real quickly our forward slash footer.css, which doesn't yet exist. Let's save that. Let's also go ahead and create a footer SAS file. All right, so in our SAS file, we don't have much happening. This is all we have happening, just a, a reference to footer and the icons. So we'll save that, we'll create our CSS file upon saving. All right, so where it says my footer, we're just going, I'm just going to paste in real quick the HTML that we created uh, in view. And I also ran through the process that we covered earlier of replacing the class to class name. All right, so just in here, I'll paste that in like that. We don't have to give it a class name of app or anything like that. So we can delete that and save it. And now our app looks like this. Very cool. So back and home. All right. So another thing that doesn't work is if we drag this in our responsive navigation, Remember, we got rid of all that view, the view directives to make this click stuff work and show the actual mobile menu. Uh, let's go ahead and make that work real quickly as well. So let's go ahead and extend this back over here. And we're going to head on over to our header JS. So now you may be wondering if you're new to React, I, you know, we already discovered so far how we handle, for instance, uh, user events like click events in Vue. Well, how do you handle click events, for instance, in React? All right. So this right here, the span class nav toggle, that is the CSS or the HTML and CSS is responsible for creating that little hamburger icon menu. So right here, when someone clicks on it, we add on click equals, and then we use our interpolation brackets and this time we just use a single bracket as opposed to two, which is what you do in Vue and Angular, but in React, it's simply one. And then we reference this dot handle click. And by the way, uh, when it comes to this right here, uh, when it comes to a stateless component, uh, such as in our footer, which is a stateless, we don't have access to this, by the way, just something to uh, kind of be aware of. Uh, also, well, before I move on to this section over here, uh, we'll go ahead up top and we're going to create our handle click method. So just right here, we'll put in handle click. We reference this dot set state and then the previous state. 
inside of here, we're going to reference is toggle on. And then the previous state is toggle on. All right, so this is going to toggle back and forth. Uh, what we need to do first is work within a constructor up here. We pass in our props or properties. In React, we call them props. We run super props. This.state equals is toggle on, and we set it to false by default. Then also underneath here, this dot handle click equal this dot handle click dot bind and this. So a lot of uh, probably confusing stuff happening right now. Now I'll ex uh, explain it momentarily though. Um, looking at this, make sure everything is good to go. All right, so let's save this real quickly. I got to fix this typo. Now let's save that. And basically what's happening here is on click, it's going to call our handle click method right here. And we're using this.setState, and this is toggling back and forth, is toggle on from true and false essentially. Um, and so if we ran it now and we clicked it, nothing would happen. That's because this menu right here, we have to add or attach an is active class onto it based on when this is clicked. All right. so. To do that, just after render right here, we're going to create a property called menu active. So let menu active equals this state dot is toggle on. We're using a ternary operator here. So, so we add the class is active, otherwise simply nothing. All right, so then just over here for our class name, what we do is get rid of this and we're gonna put them in interpolation brackets. And I'm gonna put in what was just there, which was nav right and nav menu. And then space and then end a single quote and we put menu active that we just uh, declare it up top like that. So now we'll save it. And if you bring your browser in enough to see this uh, mobile navigation, we click it. And there we go, we have access to our um, stuff down here, our, our drop down navigation. All right, so also, if you recall, if you follow along on the first part, we uh, this changes to an X if is active is added as well. Uh, so let's do that. So we'll just come right here. I'm gonna copy this just so we have the basic scaffolding right here. Remember, it's called nav toggle. That's the current class name. So we'll just replace all that with nav hyphen toggle and save. So now we'll go back, click on it, and now it changes to our X and it animates like that. Awesome. Okay, so now obviously uh, the one huge eyesore is this uh, home component and we wanna take that and turn it into this section right here. All right, so that'll be the next section. All right, so we're gonna make this ugliness once again uh, look like this here in the middle for our home component. Now notice there is a graphic here, so we're gonna to have to import uh, from the project files you know, a clouds.jpg in an assets folder. All right, so let's go and do that real quick before we start working on our home JS component. So within uh, this source folder, we're going to create a new folder called assets. And here, Visual Studio Code allows you to right click. We can reveal an explorer. And I'm going to simply, from the project files, which you can download, clouds.jpg. Okay, so now let's head on over to our home JS. And again, this is very straightforward. The only thing we're gonna be doing here is just defining properties for our heading and subheading, which are right here and here. And the only reason I'm doing that is just to show you basic interpolation. Um, and so we did that with Vue.js, so I wanna show you how to do it here as well in React. Uh, so just to define those two properties real quickly, um, very simple. All we're gonna do is right after inside of render, 
we're going to put let heading equal soaring to new heights, and then also let subheading, and we just have some lorem ipsum text here. Very simple. All right, so we'll save that. Now, I I already did the HTML for this in the view, so that would be rather redundant for me to go through that. Again, if you want to see that whole process of you know how to structure these columns and the layout based on the Balma CSS framework, then just go ahead and watch uh, the view section of that because when even when it comes to Angular, I'm not going to retype all that stuff. So I'm going to paste in just the hero section, uh, which is this bit of HTML right here. All right, so for our hero section, if I go ahead and save this and we take a look at the browser, we will now see that uh, we have soaring to new heights. Now, it doesn't really look like our mock-up simply because of two reasons. Well, first, uh, we don't have our CSS set up um, for this home JS. So let's do that real quick uh, just so that we can actually see it looking more consistent with our mock-up. So import home.css save it we'll create a home.css file or sas file rather Let's just head on over actually i have a, a sas file already off screen on a separate project um, so i'm just going to copy and paste that in real quickly so again this is all consistent with what we did with view and again if you want to see me hand typing all this stuff out go back to that early por part that portion in the course and save this and now there we go now it's looking a lot better in terms of uh, uh, being consistent with the prototype that we did. All right, so now let's uh, focus on this content here. So I'll simply just paste in the rest of that. So we'll go back to our home JS. And after this section right here, I'm going to paste in that. Oops, I pasted in the wrong uh, content one second. There, just pasted it again. All right, I'm going to save that and we'll go back to our content and here we go. Uh, one thing that's looking problematic is the font. It's not actually using our right font. Let me get this in our index.css, uh, see if that helps fix the issue or not. All right, there we go, much better. All right. All right, so the final section here is going to be with our fact page in getting that working. And we're going to use the Axios uh, HTTP client library, which we used in Vue. And I wanted to show how to use it here in React to grab from a public API um, just some mock um, fictional you know, question and answers for a fact page. All right, I'll see you then. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that fact page up and running. So again, this looks like this. And so we will grab all this stuff from an API. So first, we're going to use Axios, like I mentioned, and we're going to install it with NPM. So install Axios and save. All right, so now let's go over to our fact component, which is fact.js. First, let's get some initial setup done. Um, typically, you know, we go to our header JS real quick and grab just this import. I'm a little bit lazy. I don't want to type it all out by hand. <laughs> so uh, fact.css, we'll create a fact.sass file. All right, that looks good. Uh, for the fact sass, there's really not much. Um, so what I'll do is just, we don't even need access to the media query import line. So I'm just going to paste this in and save it. You can pause, by the way, and, and copy this. Otherwise, you can grab it from the view project if you followed along there. All right, now let's go back to our fact.js. And so the first thing that we're going to do is uh, I'm just going to paste in some of the template or all the template stuff, rather. Um, then we'll focus on the logic stuff in terms of grabbing an API object from, uh, or JSON, rather, from Axios or with Axios. So what I'll do, just paste right here. All right, so let me just tab these in real quick. So between those two divs that we have going. And uh, what we have so is just the uh, you know just typical stuff um, is for the fact. And we have a subheading here. And then we have a div class of columns. And in here is where we take the object that we're eventually going to um, define up here and grab. 
And this is how in React that you iterate through an iterable uh, in a sense. So everything inside of here is going to be repeated based on this fax property right here, uh, which is going to be you know JSON. And so for each one of the results, it will spit out this, and we're using interpolation here for a title and a body of the uh, answer in question. Okay, oh, by the way, this should not be here. That was for view. All right, cool. So now up here, in order to make all this work, uh, we have to define a constructor again and pass in properties or props. And then we run super props. And by the way, I didn't really describe it before, but when uh, you use super props here, when you want to be able to access this dot props, for example, in the constructor. So uh, after that, we define this dot state equals an object here. And we pass in a property, it's going to be a type of an array. All right, sorry about that. Just trying to put a semicolon there at the end. And then we access a React lifecycle by component did mount. And in other words, when the component loads, then execute what is ever inside of here. So this is where we have to first import Axios from Axios, which is the package we installed. And then the if you followed along for the Vue.js portion, uh, this is almost pretty much identical. So we put axios.get, and then we pass in the URL of the API. So I'm using the JSON placeholder .typeycode com, and we're grabbing the posts right here. And by the way, you can visit this URL just to see what this site's like. It's just you know allows you to create uh, or access an API. And then we run then response to a constant of facts equals res the response data, and then we're going to run slice. 0, 10, just to get 10 results, the first 10 results. And then this dot set state, we pass in facts. All right, great. So let's save that. We go back to our project. And there we go. We're at our fact page. We'll click on home. All that jazz looks good. Let's go to our fact page. And there we go, the first 10 results. All right, so now you probably have enough to go on, you know, just to ascertain the very basic and standard and core concepts and differences between React and Vue.js. So now we have one more left, which is Angular. So we're going to see, you know, how we correct, construct this same project and how we do these basic things like, you know, handling user events like clicks um, and also property and style binding and then also grabbing information uh, or data from an API. All right, so we're gonna be doing all that in Angular. All right, everyone, Gary here. And yes, I'm overdressed once again because of my daughter's dance rehearsal and I'm just lazy, I didn't feel like changing. So anyhow, welcome to the fourth and final section that's a part of this 100% free comparison course by example, where we're going to cover our app that we covered in Vue.js and React. And now we're gonna be covering it in Angular. All right, so Angular is owned and maintained by Google. And aside from being JavaScript based, it's not a library, it is a framework, so it's a little bit more robust. All right, so if you're just hopping in here, you can download the project files by uh, just dialing them. And inside of the zip, you'll see that we have a lot, a ton of different files for the, each of the lesson videos where there's a begin and end state. And there's also the HTML and the CSS that we're going to be pasting in uh, that's going to create the layout for this app. All right, so let's get started. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, as with the other two, as in Vue and React, uh, you could either choose to install your Angular project as a part of an existing project, or you can start fresh, which is what we're going to do with the help of the Angular command line interface. So first, let's go ahead and install it with npm install hyphen G for global at angular forward slash CLI. 
All right, so once it's finished, we're gonna go ahead and access the CLI. And the way you do that is through simply NG. If you hit enter, it'll give you all of the options that you can do. Um, NG hyphen V, I believe, will give you um, your current version. So to start a new project, and by the way, um, as compared to the Vue CLI and the React CLI, Angular's uh, command line interface has a lot of options. It's a lot more robust. So it's not just for installation. It lets you generate uh, components, directives, pipes, and services, and all this other stuff. So uh, we're going to start a new project by ng new, and then the name of our project. And uh, we're going to name ours compare hyphen Angular. And we're also going to add a couple options. So you could just hit enter and it'll start your project up by default. Uh, but we're gonna add two things here, two different flags. First is gonna be routing. And this will set up just a, a routes file for us as well as importing it into an ng module. So it just kind of saves a little bit of time for us by setting that file up. And then also we're going to specify a style and set it to, uh, by default, I, I believe Angular set up, if you just didn't include this at all to work with CSS, you could also specify SCSS or SAS. Now, because I the Balma CSS framework that we're using uses SAS, I'm just going to specify SAS here. So after that, just hit enter, and I will go ahead and pause it because it does run npm install for us, so it takes a little bit longer um, than, say, compared to... I, I believe you, uh, it does, you have to run npm install by default. All right, so let's go ahead and cd into it after it's been created. So compare hyphen angular. And the way we serve it here is through ng serve. So it's going to set up a local server at localhost 4200 right here. So let's go ahead and open that up once it's done. And here we go. It looks like they just recently updated this little default uh, landing page from that the uh, CLI generates for the project. It used to just say app works over here. Um, so they upgraded just a tad bit, but nonetheless, we're going to be removing all this stuff uh, here in the next section. So we're going to just uh, get started as we did with the previous two, being React and Vue by kind of outlining how things work at a very basic fundamental level and as well as setting up our components. All right. All right, so go ahead here. I'm using Visual Studio Code uh, to open up the project that we just created, which is compare-angular. So sort of a si similar folder structure that we had before. Uh, this is just for testing. You have to really worry about that. Node modules, because this is a Node-JS-based Node -based project. And then we have our source. And right here, the, the one file to pay attention to is index.html, which is the starting point of our app. The one thing uh, to take note of is this app hyphen root right here. So this right here is where the app will actually be placed in. And if we open up the app folder and go to app.component.ts, and that is for TypeScript, which is a superset of JavaScript that compiles down to JavaScript. So TypeScript gives you certain advantages over just writing plain JavaScript. Um, you can just write JavaScript if you wish though. All right, so if we look in our app.component.ts file, you'll see that we have a selector here and this whole thing right here is called your component decorator. And inside of it, you basically specify a series of properties that configure this given component. So they always have a selector and this is app root, which corresponds to this index.html app root right here. Okay, so going back to this file, we could also see that we have a template URL property, and this is bound to an external HTML file, which is located right here. And then as well, we have a style URLs property, which lets you specify uh, the an external SAS or CSS or SCSS file um, for the different, let me find it right here. Uh, by default, it's just empty for your different styles associated with this given component. All right, and then finally down here, we also have uh, the export class app component. This is where all the logic goes. So dependency injection, defining your methods and your properties all go right here. We can see one by default is created called title. If we go back to our app component.html, we'll see it's referenced here through interpolation. 
as title. All right, so that's basically you know a crash course of how you know a very rough and simplified sense of how Angular is set up to work. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're going to do is to generate some components with the CLI. So unlike the other two tools uh, for Vue and React, uh, the Angular CLI lets us real quickly just generate these files instead of having to manually create them for our, you know ourselves. Um, so what we'll do is go back to our uh, console here, and I'm going to get up another console window because I'm going to leave this ng serve ran. And here I am inside the project folder. And before we look at this real quick, I'm going to bring back the uh, Adobe XD mockup and prototype that we designed in the very first section of this course. And again, just to go over this, uh, in terms of how the components are structured, we have a header here, or a navigation rather, and then we have a footer down here, and then we have inside of here a component that will show a home, and then also over here a component that will show a fact page. All right, so we could generate a component for these, uh, for the navigation and the footer. However, if you know that they're going to be present on every page, then you don't really have to generate a component specifically for those. Instead, we're just going to place the HTML and the CSS and the coding for that inside of our app.component.ts file that we already looked at. So really that just leaves the fact and the home components to generate. So it looks like this, we're gonna access the CLI by ng. Now we could say generate or simply G, which is shorthand for generate, you can use either or, and then component or C for component, which is shorthand, you can use either or, and then the name of the component. So the first one we'll do is home, hit enter. You can see it generates several files for us and also updates our app.module.ts file. And then we'll also hit the up arrow key and changes to fac. All right, simple enough. So let's go back to our project here real quick. All right, so now we have two folders based on the component names we generated. So fac and home. All right, in the next section, we're gonna go ahead and get focused on tying these components together and setting up our routing. Okay, so in our source app and app hyphen routing module file, this was generated when we added the routing syntax or the flag rather when we started the project with the CLI. All right, so this is really straightforward. The only thing we have to worry about is this object here contained within this array right here. And for each path that we want, we designate a component and we separate them here with commas. So the first one is going to be for a home component. So the first thing we need to do is import it up at the top. So import home component, and that's the name, by the way, if you checked inside the home folder, uh, and from forward slash home and home.component.ts. Actually, we don't have to put the TS file there. Now we're going to do the same thing for the fact component. So this changes here to fac, and this right here is simply fac and fac. There we go. All right, so for this default path, we're gonna leave the path there just empty, and we're going to get rid of this children property, and we're gonna change this here to home component, or rather component, home component. All right, and then after that, we're gonna put a comma, and we also have one for our fact page. Okay, so for this, it's just simply going to be fact, and this will be fact component. There, simple enough. So now let's go ahead and focus on the app component in the HTML file for our template. Now, let me go ahead and remove that. And notice we have a router outlet down here. All right, so this is where our home component and our fat component will be placed inside. So up here will be the header, and down here will be the footer. All right, so if we take a look at the result in the browser, make sure ng uh, serve is being run in the console, 
we'll see that we have our home works. This is the home component, and this works because we set it up in the app routing file. And then if we go to forward slash fac, we'll see it says fac works. All right, great. So let's continue on and let's go ahead and let's go and integrate our Balma CSS framework. So back at our console, we're going to run npm install Balma and save it. All right, so once that is installed, we'll go back here and we're going to go into a file called angularcli.json. All right, so notice we have a property here called styles. And by default, it has it set at styles.sass, which is just right down uh, in here, right there. Uh, just before that is when we want to load or where we want to load our Balma SAS file. So just above that, go ahead and type in this right here. So node modules, Balma, Balma.sass. All right, so you could save that. Now we're also going to create an mq.sass file that's sitting right next that will sit in the same folder as our styles.sass. So I'm going to create that real quick, mq.sass. And I'm simply going to paste in what we were pasting in before. We created this same file for Vue and React. And for Vue, because that was the first uh, framework or library you know, that we're covering of the three, um, I did you know pretty much when it comes to the whole HTML and CSS process, I did Kind of write this out by hand although i don't think i did this file but all the other css and all that is all covered in view the view section of this course just for your um your, just for your reference if you wanted to see that instead of instead of me just pasting this in by the way all the project files are here so you can paste this in as well you don't have to sit there and type all this out manually but this is just for some uh, variables here that are defined that we can have access to our custom css that we will write and then some mixins here for responsive css all right so we'll save that as well so next let's go ahead and focus on real quickly the header portion of our app component well, before we focus on the header let's go ahead to our index.html file and just before the closing head tag, we're going to add our font awesome uh, link rel right here because uh, Balma does use font awesome for the icons. All right, so let's go back to our app component.html. So here we have our header, and then we'll also have our footer. So let's focus on the header and also making it work. So uh, I'm going to paste in from uh, the HTML that we've been using throughout this course for the header portion of the site. So simply paste in right here, hit control B just to give us a little bit more room. And this is what I have pasted in. So again, you can access this all from the uh, project files, which will have, you know, just uh, a folder that says like just basic HTML and you can copy this as needed and paste it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. All right. And you may have to run ng serve or stop your ng serve uh, if you haven't yet and rerun it. So hit control C Y to stop and then uh, run ng serve again. And the, uh, it, this is what yours should look like at this point. Um, so let's also add the CSS that we have been working with as well to customize it based on our needs. So let's go back here and bring back uh, control B for the sidebar. And we have our app component SAS file. So the very first thing is we're going to import our mq.sass or our media query SAS file up at the top like that. And then I'm just going to paste in uh, the rule sets that we created back in the view section of the, port, the uh, course here. So again, this is using the SAS styling, so there's no uh, semicolons and all that stuff. All right, so we'll save that. And there we go. Cool. So now if we uh, if it goes in, we'll see it doesn't work. So let's make it work by cap capturing a click event and also set up setting up a class binding here in Angular. So to do that, let's go back to our component HTML and we have our span class of nav hyphen hyphen toggle. So we have to do event binding and set up a click event. So the way you do that in Angular here is to wrap the event that you want to capture, which is a click in parentheses, equals, and we're going to put in 
toggle nav, which is the property we will define in the component class, equals not toggle nav. All right, and then we do class binding through an ng class directive, ng class, wrap that in brackets, equals, and inside of here, we put an object with is hyphen active, which is a class that has to be added, and this is based on Balma, a Balma class. So if it's added to this, then it changes this hamburger icon menu into an X so that people can close out of it on mobile versions. Uh, and we bind it to the state of toggle nav, whether it's true or false. So if it's true, it adds is active. If it's false, it won't be added, All right? So just like this is how you close that out. And then also we're going to copy ng class, this whole thing right here, and paste it onto this div class, which is responsible for showing or hiding our menu, which has these items right here. All right, so also another thing that I, I pasted in is this router link right here. So uh, the router link, th these two links right here, we didn't set up pages for, so I didn't add anything. But router link is how you actually set it up. You don't use href uh, with the path name, uh, otherwise it won't work. So you just use router link equals and then the path. So this is our home component and then this is our fac path right here. All right. Good, so let's save that. We're not done yet. We have to go back to the actual app component. So control B sidebar, app component. And in our app component, all we have to do, let's get rid of this title, we don't need it anymore, is just create a toggle nav and we set it to false. That's it. So we'll save. We'll go back to our project, drag it in so we can see and watch the animate, a little, little micro animation there with our X, and there we go. Awesome. Let's also do our footer real quick. By the way, I, I personally just like the, the coding structure. Um, if we're comparing Angular versus React, just this right here, what it, what it took, or the amount of coding it took just to create that click effect um, compared to like React, for instance. I don't know, it's just a personal preference. Definitely less coding. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and focus on the footer as well. So just down here is where our footer HTML is going to go. So the footer HTML, fairly simple. I'm gonna copy and paste that in right here. If you wanna pause and just follow along I, and go ahead, you can go ahead and do and type it out by hand or just open up the project files and paste it in as well. Um, again, nothing really serious is happening here. There's nothing, I. Uh, you know, we're not capturing click events or we're not passing in data anyhow. It's just static HTML. So when you do that, this is what it looks like. So we have our homeworks in FACWorks. Awesome. All right, great. So uh, in the next section, we're going to focus on the home HTML. All right, so for our home component, the HTML that we want to create is this hero section up here. And then this section down here, which is pretty much the secondary content. All right, so let's go back here to our project. And we're gonna go into our home, home component HTML. We'll go ahead and get all that. And we'll just do, start off with the uh, hero section first. So uh, I've pasted this in, and if we save it, we go back to our project. There we go, soaring to new heights, blah, blah, blah. We don't have CSS yet for this, so it's a little bit weird looking. Plus, we need to also get our clouds.jpg file uh, in an assets folder. So right here, an assets folder is already created for us by default. So we're going to right-click and reveal in Explorer. And we'll go into here. And you can download the project files and find this clouds.jpg. Make sure it's in there. Close this out. And if we go back to our project, it should show, wait, it won't show it yet because we don't have the CSS. Sorry about that. So now let's go to our home component SAS. And it's going to paste this in. So we're importing our media query file. We're referencing a hero class here, just making some adjustments uh, on the font sizes based on tablet and desktop. Referencing our H2, um, FACOG is for a font awesome adjustment to the size of the font. Uh, and yeah. It's pretty much it. This is for padding right here. So we'll save that. 
There we go. So that is it so far. Great. All right, so let's also continue on and add the rest of the HTML uh, to, fill, to finish out the home component page. So off screen, I'm simply pasting real quickly, or copying rather. Now I'm gonna paste this section of content right here. So we'll save that. We'll go back, and there we go. So that is the home component HTML. Awesome. All right, so we have a lot of time left here. So I'm going to just uh, finish off by uh, the only remaining section is this fact page right here. So we're going to go into the fact. Uh, actually, we'll start off with the, the component file first because we're going to pull in uh, data from the API like we did with Vue and React, the same exact API location. So in Vue and React, we used Axios uh, to pull, which is HTTP client library, to pull in the data, the JSON data. Uh, for this, for an Angular, it has a built-in library for us to use uh, for that purpose. So at the top of the file, we're going to import two different things. We're going to import HTTP from Angular, the Angular HTTP library. And then we're also going to import a map operator from reactive extensions, which is right here. So make sure you have these two added at the top. And then inside of, or at the very top of our fact component class, we're gonna have a facts property of a type array of any. And then in our constructor, we're going to pass in our HTTP, an instance of it. So private HTTP, HTTP. All right, and then inside of here, and in this constructor, this gets ran when the component loads. So we're going to reference this.http.get and then our URL to uh, the endpoint that we've been using throughout this course. So I'm going to paste that in. And after that, we add map, which we imported at the top, the response to response in JSON format. And then we subscribe result to this.facts equals the result, or response rather. I always say result, I don't know why they do that. All right, uh, and then that should be enough for this section. So now we have our fact HTML. And again, this is very simple. I, so I'm going to paste this in without the coding portion first so that I can describe that actual portion. So we're pasting in the HTML we already did during the view section. And right now we do have interpolation here. So the section that gets repeated for these questions and answers is from here to here. All right, so starting at this second div class in, what we do is add an asterisk ng4 equals, and we specify let fac of facts. And facts is the uh, property that our response is mapped to. Um, and then we reference fact.title and body right here. So if we save this, and we click on our facts page, we get an error. So let's check it out. Things don't always work uh, like you intend them to. So no provider for HTTP. All right, so that's because I forgot real quickly. If we go back here to our app module.ts, we have to import it and as it, add it as an imports right here. All right, so the uh, code for that, let's put it there in the middle, is import HTTP module from the Angular HTTP library. And then we'll just copy this put a comma here and add it as an import. So if you save, you go back and click on facts, there we go. So this is showing up off on the right because we didn't, haven't at, yet added the CSS to fix this no wrap issue over here. Um, so let's go back and do that real quick. We're gonna go to our SAS file for fact and just add these three rule sets. So flex wrap wrap is what's gonna fix that issue over there. 
Um, by the way, we go back here, we're gonna have a ton of results. If you just wanna limit that to 10, then the way in Angular to do that real quickly is go back to our HTML. And right here, we're going to put in parentheses, facts, facts.slice, 0, 10. And then we add a colon in brackets and close out that. So if we go back here, we'll now see there's only 10. And there we go. That is it. So hopefully you guys were able to learn quite a bit about uh, you know the, the, the primary core differences between React, Angular, and Vue.js. Personally, my takeaway from it is I really like Angular, and that I may be partial because I started out with Angular first, so um, that's where I'm most comfortable. Um, after that, I would say I like Vue.js a lot. Everything it kind of follows a similar flow to Angular in the idea that the component structure, you know, is very uh, it's separated in terms of you know you have your styles, you have your component logic, and you have your template. React, I just, I don't know. I just uh, don't really personally prefer it. I know it's very popular, if not probably equally pop popular to Angular. Um, but yeah, that's just my personal preference. So use this, you know, um, you know, I know a lot of maybe aspiring or new developers, you know, this is probably hopefully valuable in some way so that you could say, okay, I personally like this, you know, like view or whatever. So I'm going to start focusing on that. So hopefully there is value in that. So please, I, uh, yeah, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, that's at design course and also check out my site for more courses at Corsetro.com. All right, see you later.